welcome to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. A show so big and fat that even Jamie Oliver thinks it's beyond help. <laughs> if you haven't seen the Big Fat Quiz before, it works like any normal pub quiz, just without the annoying quiz master who thinks he's funny. <laughs> well, that can't be right, I'm still in it. <laughs> you can play along at home, uh, it's dead easy. All you need is a lavish set, a prime time slot on Channel 4 and six celebrities. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's meet our teams. First up, two of the toughest stand-ups to have emerged from the gritty working men's clubs of the North. <laughs> it's Alan Carr and Michael McIntyre. <laughs> Next up, we have from Gavin and Stacey, it's Ruth Jones, and from the Three Musketeers, by the looks of things, it's Jonathan Ross. <laughs> and finally, Two cool characters who listen to bands you've never heard of, only watch films with subtitles, and wear fashion so cutting edge they're already rocking the Naughties revival. It's Noel Fielding and Richard Iowadi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing, as is tradition on the Big Fat Quiz, you've got team names. Mm. Alan, Michael, any thoughts on a team the name Marcus for you two? What about Posh and Specs? Posh and Specs. <laughs> Chatty and Fatty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Posh and Specs does it posh for me. And specs. Posh and Specs. Posh and Specs, are you happy with that? Let's do it. Go oh. Posh and Specs. <laughs> Jonathan, Ruth, yeah, what about a name for you two? We want to call ourselves Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> not Team Wagner, not no. Wagner, not Wagner. 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 Va Wagner. Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. No, Richard, anything? Right. What's happening? T what's, uh, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening is we're thinking about team names. Like, yeah, if you had okay, a name okay. for a team. I thought the moccasins. The moccasins. Which I quite like. But then I thought we could soup it up. We could be the electric moccasins. <laughs> Sound like a psychedelic cool band. Cool names for bands just trip off your tongue, don't they? <laughs> the electric moccasins. The, yeah, the electric moccasins. Or Robson and Jerome. <laughs> 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 Which one are you? Yeah. Well, Jerome. Yeah. <laughs> you, have you had a good year? No, Michael, you had a good year, didn't you? You wrote your, your autobiography. What's it about? <laughs> I did, I wrote it. Did you make anything up? Or was it all true? Well, I didn't... I know this is hard to believe. I didn't um, get a lot of women before my wife. And uh, so I, I, I... It looked so bad. It basically looked like I'd only ever slept with my wife. So I added some pretend women in. <laughs> And they didn't exist, and my wife won't let it go. <laughs> Every night she keeps saying to me, "Who were they?" And I'm like, darling, I made them up because I didn't sleep with enough girls. And she, she comes to it every day. Was it Janet? So I don't know who <laughs> Janet is. <laughs> so I got in trouble for sleeping you with fictional... You make up women's names, don't you? Janet. I, to be honest with you, as soon as I said so Janet... You, you want Benice, Rio. <laughs> Alan, have you had much experience in lying about sleeping with women? No, but uh, I can have a go. <laughs> Rio and Benice. Rio and Benice. <laughs> Oh, well, the big news for you is you're going on tour again next year. Yeah, I'm think... back on tour, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Someone's slow hand clapping. <laughs> Jonathan, for the year, what, what, you've been writing comic books, right? Uh, no, I've been doing that, and I've been doing some special and stuff, and I'm doing some stuff yeah. for... Uh, I'm doing... Well, I can't really talk about what I'm doing next year. I'm doing this, I'm taking over a lot of shows on, on Channel 4, 8 out of 10 cats, the big fake quiz. <laughs> 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 Picking up some shows, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ruth, what have you got coming up this year? I did a biopic about Hattie Jakes, which is coming out soon. I like Hattie Jakes. Yeah, a lot of people don't know who she is. People under 40, a lot of them just don't know. But you under, you're under 40. What are you? I'm under 40, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's hard to tell. You could be 500 years old, cos you look like a vampire. <laughs> no way anyone would know for sure where you come from. <laughs> You do look like kind of a, a, an undertaker from the sort of turn of the century. <laughs> Which is a good look for a comedy panel show, I feel. <laughs> Cheers people up, this look. I think you look incredible. Jim, have you ever been remotely experimental with your, your clothing? Cos you always... Experimental? This you... has got a curved collar. Yeah. <laughs> Richard, you're, you're a yeah. properly dressed young man. Thank you. Properly attired. Well, in, I look warm. <laughs> I like the way that you said to them, what have you been up to when it gets to us? They go, well, how's... Yeah. I like your clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Richard, yeah. <laughs> well, well, um, that's show good. business, Noel. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, uh, it's exciting year for you. You directed your first film. I have, yes. So it's Submarine. It's out in March, It's, it's right? called Submarine. It's out in March. I've seen it. It's very good. It's amazing. There's no submarines in it, though, but it's no. very good. <laughs> yeah. Are you worried people go hoping to see a submarine and come out disappointed? I'm worried no one will go. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of their interest in naval policy. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... <laughs> you 
you see why I've got Rich on my team? Because yeah. he ends punchlines with That's naval good. policy. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. Welcome to the niche corner. Yeah. <laughs> right, everyone's here. We're going to start some big fat quiz action after the break. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Welcome back to the big fat quiz of the year. If there's one thing we can be certain of, it's that the year started with January and February. Let's remind ourselves what happened. Full body scanners showing naked images of passengers were introduced at all airports. It's changed the way I answer the question, anything to declare. It's been really cold. <laughs> and I've got a tiny penis. <laughs> Vernon Kay admitted sending flirty texts to five women. Vernon knew it had to stop when Jason Manford tried to Skype him. <laughs> no, that's not on. Yeah. Did you get a call as well? <laughs> Is no one safe, Jimmy? <laughs> Jason's <laughs> one of us! <laughs> He's allowed to twank without us making jokes about it. Is twank the official word? I just like it? saying it. Twank. <laughs> I quite enjoyed it when he did it to me. <laughs> <laughs> and Toyota had to recall four million cars because of faulty brakes. Toyota's famous for its hybrid cars. The front half is a coffin on wheels and the back half is a death trap. <laughs> well, of course, it wouldn't be a quiz without questions. Eyes down for January and February. OK, question number one. What better way to start the show than with a question from the legendary Will Farrell? Hi, Jimmy. I'm giving it a lot of pizzazz right now. <laughs> Can you remember the beginning of the year? Probably not, because you're drunk all the time. <laughs> but it was cold. I mean, it was so cold. Well, it wasn't cold for me, because I live in L.A., but, man, was it cold. <laughs> now, can you tell me why the cold snap got three well-meaning members of the Thames Valley police into trouble? OK, you know the score. You've got to write down the answer. Will Farrell there asking you a question. The cold snap got the police into trouble. Right. Uh, what happened? <gasps> snap, there was snow everywhere. The police oh, were doing something on, in the now. snow. Oh, hang on now. This is coming back to me. Too. Inappropriate for someone in uniform. Have a guess, come on. Was it sexual? <laughs> no! <laughs> I like the thought, though, that it's snowy out, shall we, lads? <laughs> like touch up a snowman with a strategically placed carrot. <laughs> I watched the snowman with my son, you know, the animated thing? Yes. We're walking in that. Because yeah. you're supposed to watch that at Christmas. Mm. He's five years old. It's the most depressing piece of film I've ever seen in my life. He dies. The snowman dies. And my child's cried for an hour and a half all year. Dora the Explorer hasn't had so much of a cold. Now I'm watching the snowman dying at the end. He doesn't die, he melts. Yeah, but he's dead. He's made of snow. It's just all year we watch TV and people, you know, Peppa Pig. If Peppa Pig came on and just went, I've heard it, and slit his wrists. <laughs> I wouldn't watch that. So, Michael, well, well, how did you deal with this, with your little boy all upset? What did you say to talk him through this? Well, everything I do in this month revolves around Father Christmas, so I threaten... Yeah, I tell him to do stuff, or I threaten that Father Christmas won't come. <laughs> <laughs> or I threaten to phone Father Christmas. I'm phoning Father Christmas! <laughs> and do you have pretend conversation with Father Christmas? Oh, yes! Uh, I've been on the call waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. OK, footballers were in the news for all the wrong reasons this year, but can you tell me what's just happened in this photo? Oh, yes, I know. It's that bad man. OK. He's a lovely man. OK, get something down. I'm going somebody bridge. Can I realize his name? Nolan Richard are really our sporting oh, experts this year, I fear. Exactly <laughs> <laughs> like a big Do you use that handkerchief, Heather? Do I use that handkerchief? <laughs> yeah. Uh, sometimes if Jason Manfred calls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or as a, as a surrender sign. <laughs> <laughs> OK, this is Yosemite Bear. Take a look at this hunk of beef. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wagner! <laughs> That's a bit, yeah. He got very excited about something this year and became a YouTube sensation as a result. What was he so excited about? Oh, well, look... That's he got really way. excited about something. <laughs> Massive internet clip. So that looks like it's something that you would hook so onto a weight. Time now, panellists, for another guest question. It's over to the lovely Nicole Scherzinger. Hi, Jimmy. Now, I've met a few divas in my time, but nothing compares to the tantrums Gordon Brown used to throw when he was in number 10. 
Can you name three objects he allegedly threw at his colleagues? I met Gordon Brown once. Did you like him? He threw a cup at me. <laughs> <laughs> We're having coffee and... Oh! <laughs> I met him for coffee and he blew froth in my face. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> Stayed on my eyebrows all day, I look ridiculous. I'd rather him throw things than, you know, when he tries to smile, that... <laughs> That's the beginning of that advert for strokes, isn't it? <laughs> Alan, Alan, you shouldn't joke about strokes, because if you ever have a stroke, you'll be laughing on the other side of your face. <laughs> that advert's frightening, though, because they talk about the smell of burning toast. If you have a stroke, then you smell burning toast. So every time I smell burning toast, I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm having a stroke. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. <laughs> is that your main concern, is that you'll be embarrassed yeah. if you have a stroke? In Camden, <laughs> yeah. Just one. <laughs> you have to go in the stocks if you have a stroke. <laughs> but can you imagine me watching that stroke advert thing? It was like, I had all the symptoms. You limp down one side, and I'm like, blurred speech, and I was like, oh, you know, maybe... Maybe I'm not camp, I'm just having a really long stroke. <laughs> <laughs> OK, has everyone finished? Have you got the answers? Oh. Can I just ask, yeah. are you related? <laughs> yes, he's my sister. <laughs> OK, let's have some answers. OK, so Will Farrell asked how some policemen got into trouble during the cold snap. OK, Alan, Michael, what have you got? Building an offensive snowman. <laughs> Do you think they built an offensive snowman? Yeah. Well, what sort of thing did you have in your like mind's eye? a snow eye? slut. <laughs> a snow slut? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'd only put one stone for the eye so it looked like it was winking. <laughs> Uh, Jonathan, told me through, told me through your well, we didn't. We genuinely didn't know this story, so we thought, what do you get in trouble? So either snowball fight or doing a wee. Doing a wee, going out and doing a wee in the snow, maybe doing patterns, their names, maybe spying each other, having a good time. <laughs> what a detailed guess, I like it. And what have you gone for, Nolan Richard? They well... kill people. <laughs> 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 I, I think that would certainly get them into it. trouble, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be a spot to bother. Yeah. I did try and write it like a serial killer as well. <laughs> well, mission accomplished there, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> I think they probably took their trousers and pants off and then ran around holding hands and catching snowflakes on their tongues. <laughs> but Richard grabbed the pen first. <laughs> OK, well, let's hope that continues happening well. throughout the show. <laughs> Richard grabbed that well, pen first. OK, let's see well, it's easier. Right. It's easier if I just show you. This is what they got okay. into trouble for. These are officers of the law you're watching here. That is a riot shield. This is your tax money being spent. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> That's the best use ever of a riot shield. That's yeah. brilliant. <laughs> well, who was filming that? They must have known someone was I filming know. it. They must have thought this is fine, what we're doing. So yeah. many rapes and murders occurring behind them. <laughs> while they frolic in the icy. <laughs> Oh, well, it's easier to catch criminals when it's snowing, in fairness to them, because they've got the prints. They can just get there's been a break and we'll just follow those. <laughs> not sort of tax dodging, though. No. <laughs> 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 White collar crime. Yeah. Intellectual property crime. Something <laughs> <laughs> like that, Jimmy. <laughs> I mean, you haven't thought this through. It's really. <laughs> okay, okay I asked on. you what had just happened in this photo of some footballers. What did you all think? Well, I think we've got this one right. Yes, you've, you've said... Uh... Well, you've said exactly what it is. <laughs> well, they didn't shake hands. You can see it's happening right there. <laughs> it's one of the easiest questions I've ever been asked in my life. <laughs> he missed his hand because he, he slept with his girlfriend. You just have to have eyes for this question. <laughs> Ruth knew this immediately. If She didn't know the details, but she knew some of it. Well, Ruth, what, have you written an essay? Oh, that's that guy, um, Bridge, isn't it? And then I realised... He's got his name on the back, so... It wasn't... And then she said the other man, Samsung, who we believe is... <laughs> <laughs> Samsung Bridge, had an altercation <laughs> of some sort. Yeah, I said the one in blue had a bit of a go with the wife of the one in white. That's pretty close to the exact right answer. Nolan Richard, you went for... <laughs> Uh, a bumming. <laughs> bumming. Noel, could you uh, just tell me who had the pen for this answer? <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, that, that is wrong. The correct answer is Wayne Bridge refused to shake the hand of John Terry after the tabloids reported that Terry had an affair with his ex-girlfriend. In brackets, a bumming. <laughs> You know, he's watching telly and he's like, oh, I love the big fat quiz. Come on in, darling. Come watch the big fat quiz with me. Oh, yeah, John, I love all that. 
and then they sit down there. That's probably more offensive to them. Oh, blimey, are they all big fat quiz for you? <laughs> I think bumming sounds like it's quite a fun word, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It doesn't sound yeah, you try living with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, I asked you what uh, Yosemite Bear got so excited about. What's your Oh, part? I know this one. You know this one? Yes. Oh, he well, found his to... keys. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't know for ages that they were on him. <laughs> <laughs> They're around his neck all the time. Yeah. He was like, ooh, my keys! And he looked all around the mountains. <laughs> and then ultimately he went, I found them! <laughs> he is balancing the moon on the back of his hand. <laughs> <laughs> No, Richard, what, what have you got written? Richard's written this, but I can't even read yeah, it. No, I, I, He's... I, I drifted off in the middle. <laughs> He's, what, what's yeah, the middle so word there? It's meant to be saw, uh, but um, I, I got confused. He I'm just saw thinking... a rainbow colony. Colony, yeah. <laughs> OK, and you've gone for Jonathan Roof? Well, no, I, know, I think I know this because um, my kids are showing me this internet clip, which is double rainbow. And this is a guy, and he's obviously camping or something. He's out, he's a wild man, as we can see, and he, I think he's filming it as well, and he's, he does seem to be like he's a little bit high. And I, he sees a double rainbow. I think camping is an excellent description of what this guy's doing. I, I'm going to show you the clip now. This is what this guy became an internet sensation for. Have a look. <laughs> oh, my God! Woo! Oh, wow! Yeah! Double rainbow all the way across the sky! <laughs> So beautiful. <laughs> 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 oh my god. <laughs> it's so intense. I think these those keys are for a box of rainbows and he's unlocked them and let a couple. <laughs> and it clearly says on the lid one at a time, not <laughs> <one>. <laughs> And he went, oh, my God, two have gone out. It's called sit on the lid. <laughs> oh, so intense. <laughs> OK, uh, Nicole Scherzinger wanted to know which items Gordon Brown allegedly threw at his colleagues. What did your put? Mobile phone and then a pen. OK, lovely. Uh, Jonathan and Ruth, you've gone for... I, will, I thought maybe a shoe. Ruth thought a telephone. Mm. OK, and uh, Noel and Richard, you've gone with... Satsuma, live wasp and nightmares. <laughs> Let's go over to uh, Nicole Scherzinger and find out what the real answer was. <laughs> Did you get it? Gordon Brown allegedly threw a mobile phone, a stapler, and dun -dun -dun -dun, a laser printer at colleagues <laughs> while he was prime minister. Jimmy, if she had actually said either Satsuma, Wasp, or Nightmare, <laughs> it would have been the greatest moment of all our lives. <laughs> <laughs> she said he threw a da 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 at someone. <laughs> Which, I, which I believe is a slang for Zatzuma wasp. <laughs> yeah. How can you throw a live wasp? A, a dead wasp, I get, I get that. Well, you Flick pretend it. you're throwing it, but you, you're in cahoots with the wasp, right. and you go, in a minute, <laughs> when I release you, just fly straight towards his head. <laughs> and then it goes there. Like so it looks like you're throwing it, yeah, but, but really, it's flying. Yeah. Why do you think it's weirder throwing a live wasp than a nightmare? <laughs> <laughs> Right, that is the end of the first round. The scores are, so far, Alan and Michael have an incredible one. Uh, Jonathan and Ruth have two points there in the lead. Noel and Richard are lucky to have one. <laughs> Time now for an ad break, or as I like to think of it, a chance for you to see some of the things you got for Christmas advertised at half price in the sales. See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to the big fat quiz of the year. And as the intimate text message of January and February turns into the awkward public apology of March and April, <laughs> let's remind ourselves of what happened. Ricky Martin came out of the closet. In fairness, he'd only popped into the closet to find the perfect leggings to go with his crop top. <laughs> Party drug, methadrone or meow meow was banned. The drug was originally sold as plant food, 
which explains why my daffodils are so paranoid. <laughs> I'm not sure what Meow Meow's actually like, because I haven't tried it. I'll ask Noel. Noel. <laughs> 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 it's all right, actually. <laughs> but apparently it's bad for you. Is it... Didn't tell us that when we were taking it by the shed load, did they? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite weird, though. Have you ever smoked drugs through a cat's anus? <laughs> <laughs> I saw a double rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> right, time for some more questions. If you've seen the Big Fat Quiz before, you'll know that every year the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School in Neesden put on some rather unconventional school plays. What I want to know is, what news story are they adorably acting out here? Take a look. Whoa, what was that? Okay, so write down, write down the answer there. Time now for a say what you see puzzle. Concealed within these pictures is a headline. Here's an example of how we do this. Okay, so that's Michael Mac in Tyre. See how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Mac in Tyre. Okay, that's just the example. What I want to know is what news headline from the year is this? Oh. It's not as easy when it's not your actual name, is it, Michael? No. Can I have that picture, though, to take home? Yes. <laughs> it's a little treat for you. Yeah. Thank you. Apple one. Okay, so say what you see. Rocket. Ah. Could not be easier. OK. Time for another guest question. This time it's over to the one and only Jack Black. Hi, Jimmy. Here's a question for you big fat quizzers. Which major crisis did Boffins attempt to solve using nylon tights, golf balls, Rubber tires and human hair. Which <laughs> Very confused about that question. <laughs> okay, so what did scientists try? There was a, a, basically a disaster, and oh. scientists tried to solve ah. the problem with golf balls, human hair. They, they, they tried everything. They tried a oh. bunch of different things. Totally know it. <laughs> That's got to be right. Yeah. Have a look at this clip. What has this woman just found out? What did he say? <laughs> You're joking! <laughs> I can't believe this, that he said that. That is, uh, oh, this was, yeah. that is a clip of one of the women that Michael McIntyre claims to have slept with in his autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> OK. This year, esteemed historian Dr David Starkey has returned with another tale from history. Can you tell me whose saga he is recounting here? And so, the romance of the Northumbrian princess and the lusty knight reached its tragic conclusion. Rumours abounded that the knight had topped with wenches in taverns whilst away on tournament. But his fate was sealed when the chroniclers revealed that he texted lewd images of himself to another, clad only in his codpiece. <laughs> Distraught, the princess fled to the colonies, finding solace in the arms of Will I Am and a certain acrobat named Derek. After a rough of the plague, the princess sought absolution with the holy bishop Piers Morgan, exiled the knight, and returned to her rightful place in the nation's hearts. I'm pretty confident we've got all of these right. <laughs> Well, let's see. We saw the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School performing one of their unusual school plays. Did you get what it was all about? With the ash cloud, the volcanic ash cloud, the Icelandic ash cloud. Okay, uh, Alan, Michael? Ash cloud. Ash cloud. Okay, I imagine you. No, Noel, Richard. New show. I thought it was my new show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly better production yeah. values. But... So you thought the it's kids of Mitchell Brook Primary scripted. School in Neesden had gone into the future, seen your new show, and done a play about it? Yeah, you make it sound stupid when you put it like that. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Draw, was the Ashdale? Was anyone inconvenienced by this? Was anyone stuck anywhere? 
Oh, I, I pretended I was. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> There's so many people kept using that, saying, oh, I'm stuck, I'm stuck in Morocco. I'm stuck. So <laughs> people would... <laughs> I said I was stuck, so I didn't have to do any work. <laughs> yeah, was that when I was trying to get you to do my show? Yeah, that's oh, I was, I was no, I was, I was actually in, stuck in Morocco. <laughs> Really well. Yes, no, I was. Because of that ash. Yeah. <laughs> I like the fact that everyone got very angry with Iceland over it. I was furious with Iceland. And for a little while, I really didn't like Icelandic people. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't like even you. know any. But just the idea that they wouldn't control their volcano. <laughs> like, I could be so stupid. You know you've got a volcano. Put a cork in it or something. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't have to block these things up it now. Be right off their chicken tikka lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I asked you what headline was represented by the picture puzzle. What did you put? We put R, Tug, Rocket, I, Sanitary Towel. <laughs> well, that's what it is. You told us. You just read them what they are across. <laughs> jo Jonathan, Ruth? Oh, we got it right. Apple, Apple, Launch, I, Sanitary Towel. <laughs> <laughs> You've fallen at the final hurdle, then. <laughs> Just talk, talk me through what's, uh, okay. what's going on. Huh? What, what have you gone with? Mouth pull rocket eye parcels. <laughs> parcels. <laughs> parcels. Yeah. I don't want those sort of parcels coming through my letterbox. <laughs> Jimmy, can I ask you what, what the answer is? Yes, it's Apple launches iPad. They, iPad. They can I right. actually just say that that is not... That does not work. Uh, <laughs> Apple... No, stop right there. What did you say? Ah, Paul. No. Yeah. It, no, do you know no, the way that you say no, that is not a fruit. Do you not? <laughs> do you not have an ah, Paul? Oh, can I look? I'd like a bunch of ah, Pauls. <laughs> We've done that especially oh, for you. Oh, this is yummy. Tail. Oh, have you tasted this ah, Paul? <laughs> oh. On a banana. <laughs> Exactly how you talk and you know no, it. No, 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 uh, no, no such Arpel. thing as an apple. <laughs> if I went to the apple shop and said, hi, I'd like an apple, <laughs> they wouldn't even let me in. <laughs> that is a void question. Yeah, and if you true. don't get rid of it, I'm walking. <laughs> and I'm going with him. Yeah. <laughs> if you two still might, maybe the campus walk out. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Jack Black. Uh, wanted to know what scientists, boffins, tried to solve with nylon tights, golf balls, rubber tyres and human hair. Uh, Alan and Michael, you've gone for...? BP oil spin. And, and they tried to use all of those things in order to stop the oil Yeah, from... to plug the gap. OK. <laughs> Jonathan Ruth. We thought that they were making a dress for Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> the if you were trying to plug the oil spill, you didn't just put a couple of golf balls and some tights down there. <laughs> you were trying to do it with a top hat. Did you hear about that, that <laughs> top hat? I, I don't think it was actually a top hat. <laughs> it wasn't like someone in spats just went, that should do it. Yes. <laughs> it's, um, what, what have you gone with? How to lower the cost of dentistry. <laughs> with nylon tights, golf balls, rubber tyres and human hair. I'm not, <laughs> no, I'm not saying they did it well. <laughs> OK, let's go over to Jack Black for the answer. Hey, Jimmy. The answer was, of course, the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Turns out that cement worked a lot better than golf balls. Who knew? <laughs> if you like the way in America they try to make it seem like it was our fault, mm. because BP used to be a British company, and it's not... I don't think it's even owned by British yes. people anymore. It's mainly American. Yes. And every time it was on the news, Obama yeah. would say, British Petroleum, yeah. British Petroleum. Yeah. We don't have a go at them for sending Hannah Montana over. They should get us <laughs> when it comes to British petroleum, no longer British. Exactly. They should have put her down there and tried to clog it up. <laughs> I, heard that it, um, I heard that it cost BP £15 billion pounds in petrol. That's the bad news. The good news is they got 380 trillion nectar points. <laughs> That's enough to buy the whole of Asda. I, don't, I reckon that would still only get you a toaster. You ever collected nectar points? Yeah, I used to. You don't get anything. You could be there for a year and you go, oh, a CD, yeah. thanks. Oh. No, that's not true. I got a, a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> How much petrol did you go through? It wasn't a Henry, though, was it? Oh, no. No way. There's no. not enough nectar <laughs> no. points in the world. <laughs> Hoover with a face on it. <laughs> OK, I asked you what news the woman in the clip had just received. What did you get? Gordon Brown had slagged her off. <laughs> she went up to him yeah. and she, she said to him, Where do all these Eastern Europeans come from? <laughs> hey, Gordon, where do all these Eastern Europeans come from? <laughs> the answer's actually in the question. It's actually quite an easy, <laughs> <laughs> an easy question. He could have just put that to bed with Eastern Europe. 
Um, but now he really panicked and he called her a bigoted woman in, when he left his Tiny microphone on. Yeah. He left his mic on in the car. It, it could have been so much worse, couldn't it? I mean, you know, he's under that amount of pressure, he gets into the car, the mic's still on. It could have been much worse than a bigoted woman. He might have said big titted, we don't know for sure. <laughs> Imagine Would if you tried to cover it up by going, no, no, I said big titties. <laughs> yeah, but then he drove past her and threw a printer at her out the window. <laughs> so, Jonathan, Ruth, you went with big titties. Big lady, we know that, yeah. And yeah, Noel, Richard, you went with? She's got to present, never mind, the blood shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, that is Phil Jupiter's before he puts his makeup on. <laughs> I think they should make everyone keep their microphones on all the time. Okay, just to catch me, it's funny. Oh, most Did you people hear... don't have microphones on all the time. <laughs> I know you exist in I TV. On... Yeah, yeah, just keep say... everyone's but... microphones on. <laughs> and <they're> so showbiz. <laughs> what I like is when he, because he, he was in the car, and then he, he had to, they had to turn the car around and go to her house, and he spent a, an hour with her in her house, and then he came out of the house, and when I've just spent, I've just spent an hour with, uh, with uh, Mrs Duffy apologising, and <laughs> I'm a sinner, and that's the end of that. Then he got into his car and drove off. When I was watching the news, I was just praying that he had then left it on again. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody bitch, that fat bitch. Didn't offer me a cup of tea. Uh, Gordon, you're up. Turn the car around! <laughs> I would have liked him to lose his microphone on again and again until he moved in with Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> the most embarrassing thing was it wasn't even a clip on mic, it was a handheld. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this thing on? What a <laughs> Okay, Dr. David Starkey uh, recounted a tale from history. Did you work out what he was talking about? Yes. You, you did. I think I might have, yeah. No, Richard, what have you got? I can't remember her name, but I put Geordie Chocolate Eyes. <laughs> I'm so tempted to give you that. That's sort of. Hey, you know what no, I mean? I know exactly what you mean because she's now gone back to using her. Because she was Cheryl Cole, yeah. but now she's gone back to being Cheryl from Girls Aloud. Oh, really? Uh, which is her maiden name. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if, after this if everyone just referred to her as Geordie Chocolate Eyes? <laughs> and that became officially her name. Geordie Chocolate Eyes? But she has late got chocolate eyes, though, so fair enough. Oh. <laughs> So there's quite a strange bunch on the X Factor, aren't they? Because when you look at... She has got chocolate eyes, which I hadn't uh, noticed one. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. Um, <laughs> but Simon Cowell, his head is impossibly flat. I mean, it's like... It's, it's actually cuboid. His head is like... It's like someone's drawn a face onto a box and stuff. <laughs> I believe they were trying to make a Lego figure and they couldn't get the top of the Lego flat enough. <laughs> and his head. It's because he sleeps upside down. <laughs> on, it, on his head. <laughs> and let's go back over to the good doctor just to have it confirmed. Hello, Jimmy. I was, of course, talking about the fall of the House of Coal. <laughs> oh, Ashley, you fool. You damn foolish fool. <laughs> oh, I like that. It's Dr David Sarkey basically going, oh, you're an idiot, I definitely would have. <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing. <laughs> right, let's see how you're doing. Uh, Alan and Michael have five. Oh. In the lead, Jonathan and Ruth with six. Oh. Noel and Richard with two. Oh, dear. Right, we've got to take a break now, so for everyone watching on new, expensive 3D TVs, this one's for you. See you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back for more Big Fat Quiz action. And so we cast off the warm jumper of March and April to reveal the pasty torso of May and June. Let's remind ourselves what happened. After offering to sell access to her ex-husband, Prince Andrew, for half a million pounds, Sarah Ferguson was pilloried in the press. Why is it about the fat, greedy ginger parasite that people don't like? <laughs> taxi driver Derek Bird went on a gun rampage in Cumbria. Typical taxi driver, shooting across a junction. <laughs> <laughs> Footage of Rona Williams' journey to work along the A1 became an internet sensation because this happened. Can you not see it? Oh, my God. Well, what a great, exciting way to get to work, though, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like that advert where they have the big stride out the window and he goes and he gets a class <laughs> off the way in. You know, I don't know. I don't know what I do if that happened to me. I guess just keep driving the truck. Yeah. <laughs> did they survive? They did survive. What happened? The truck driver didn't notice <gasps> that there was a car on the front of his truck. Why did the person filming it not try to help the situation? <laughs> because that's a brilliant thing to film. <laughs> when it 
be lovely, like, like Alton Towers, and when you reach your destination, you actually pick a photo of it. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, <"Woo." laughs> Okay, That's question amazing. time. <laughs> to kick things off, we have another guest question. <laughs> so it's over to Simon Pegg. Hi, Jimmy. Here's a question. 28-year-old Anna Chapman gained worldwide notoriety this year when her secret was revealed. Question is, what was that secret? Anna Chapman. Anna Chapman, what was her secret? Worldwide notoriety. OK. From June this year, where could you try a fainting fancy, buy some screaming yo-yo or a chocolate frog? What? <laughs> a new chocolate frog would wake you up. <laughs> From June onwards, you could buy those things. You could test them. Oh come on, look, Mike. I don't know what. The, I really about. don't know what's going on on question two. I don't know. Your mouth is moving, and I can't make any sense of it. You might as well be speaking Iranian to him or something. You've got no idea what's going on. Have you? No, fainting fit. Not a fainting fit, <laughs> but a fainting fancy. It's like a really famous thing. A chocolate frog. A chocolate frog. It's a famous thing. It All couldn't right. be a bigger thing. All right. <laughs> I'm not being patronising, I'm being condescending. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Ball of what can we say? Where is it? <laughs> Alan, Michael, you've got, to, you've got to write something down. OK, OK. So where do you think you, you could have got... You must Where do you think know. you could get a chocolate frog from? OK. After playing Nicholas Mahout at this year's Wimbledon, John Eisner said he could have eaten 12 Big Macs. Why was he so hungry? No, were they big mac and rows they could eat? Were they big mac and rows stopping you? <laughs> oh, I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the tennis when the roof shut for the first time. Oh, I accidentally good. lent on the button. <laughs> 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 it did shut and everyone was really excited. It was really boring, though. It just went... Yeah. It took ages and it was like, this is history! And I was like, oh, I'm going to get another pins. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right. Uh, in May, there was the small matter of a complete change of government. Let's remind ourselves how it happened. We're going at it all night, all day. That's how we're going to win this election. <laughs> I agree with Nick. See, I, I agree with Nick. See, I agree with uh, Nick. Gordon says Nick agrees with Gordon, and Nick says Nick doesn't agree with Gordon. Someone has just handed me the tape. Let's play it and see if we can hear it. It's just a song. Bring it to the woman. <laughs> it's my intention to tender my resignation to the Queen. Her Majesty the Queen has asked me to form a new government. And I have accepted. Once asked what your favourite joke was, you replied, Nick Clegg. And... I, I'm afraid I did oh, once. Right. I'm, I'm, uh... <laughs> <laughs> We're all... <laughs> Lovely to see civil partnerships in the news. Um, <laughs> OK, that was the general election, but what, can you tell me uh, why 600 people in Chester... 200 people in Sheffield and 150 people in Hackney were particularly angry on polling day. You got it? You good? You happy? <laughs> you ready for answers? You got it? You got something? I just found some chewing gum under my chair. I was got really angry for about a minute and realised it was me and Russell two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Who's done that? Oh, that was me. <laughs> That's fine. OK, let's have some answers. Let's get some, let's get some answers done. Simon Pegg wanted to know how the gorgeous Anna Chapman made the news. Did anyone remember? We thought she was the stig. She was the stig. Yeah, but we meant stig of the dump. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Jonathan, Ruth, you've gone for... A sexy spy lady. OK, yeah, she was a spy. You got that Very right? Sexy. Yes. I'm afraid you guys got that wrong. OK, uh, next one. I asked you where you could try a fainting fancy, buy some screaming <coughs> yo-yo and buy a chocolate frog. Noel and Richard. Dixons. <laughs> <laughs> we went for Dixons. <laughs> what do you mean, we? You went for Dixons. Yeah. Dixons not even still going, is it? Why don't you just put Rumbelows? <laughs> Jonathan and Ruth, where do you think you could buy a screaming yo-yo, well, a fainting fancy and a chocolate frog? I know this. Ruth wasn't sure because she has never seen a Harry Potter film, which I find almost impossible to believe. Or read a book. No, I'm, nor I'm me. pretty sure... What? Nor You're me. in some of them. <laughs> <laughs> some of <the> Snape. <laughs> Was that good? You're very good in them. <laughs> anyway, Harry Potter Land has opened at Universal Studios in Orlando. I went there in the summer. It is... If you like the books and the film, there's no other place you want to be. You, you went there in the summer? Yes, we had a so fantastic look. time. Drank some butter beer. I drank I've, a lot I've of got, butter I've beer. got a picture of that. I've literally... Look at that. <laughs> 
That was really good, really thick. Your eyes look quite odd. There. I was drunk on butterbeer. <laughs> Alan and Michael, what did you go for here? Piss flaps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Alex. Okay, okay, you told you know. me to write something, so I did. <laughs> hey, me, if you don't like what you say. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the wittiest thing I've ever said, but I was stressed, <laughs> weren't I? I thought, wait, pick that. Keep saying, write something, write something. I'm very disappointed in you, too. Sorry. What, is that not the right answer? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I asked you why uh, John Eisner was so hungry after playing Nicholas Mahout at this year's Wimbledon. What did you put? We went on. It went on and on and on to. It went on for that. It was. What was the final score? Something like. Okay. Well, it was. It was the longest tennis match in history ever. They played 183 games. It took 11 hours and five minutes. They look like a tennis ventriloquist act, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Alan and Michael, did you? Yeah, we, the longest we, tennis we, match. We got match, pretty good. Okay, yeah. and you went with Nolan Richard? I put, he just had sexy times. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it's called in your house? Six yes, times. six o'clock to 6.15. <laughs> we just uh, put an egg timer out. <laughs> and uh, when the sound's gone, so are we. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I wanted to know why 600 people in Chester, 200 people in Sheffield and 150 people in Hackney were so angry on polling day. Did you get this? Because they live in those places. <laughs> <laughs> they closed the booths. They closed the booths? Yeah. You've the... got a strange voice, haven't you? Because sometimes it's all high and pretty like a flute. Other times, they closed the booths. <laughs> Pretty like a flute. Yes, do a high bit. We'll focus on the positive. Hello! See, that's nice. <laughs> Alan comes with a range, whereas you're either Guy Fawkes or Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> OK, what did you go for, Jonathan Ruth? What did you go for? Hitler. Have the whole range. They were angry on polling day because they couldn't the find talk. a pole. They could, couldn't find a pole? <laughs> no. <laughs> Noel, Noel and Richard have probably, probably got it. Okay, 600 people in Chester, 200 people in Sheffield, 150 people in Hackney. Angry because they got bitten by a horse. <laughs> the same horse, Jimmy. That horse was busy that day. Biting and galloping around. <laughs> My you know sister that? actually got bitten by a zebra. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This feels like overhearing something in doctor's her... surgery now. <laughs> How did the zebra get close enough to bite? We were in France. We were in one of these kind of outdoor Oh, France, zoo where the zebra things. roam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, while we're doing animal-related stories, I know someone who went into anaphylactic shock mm. because she was at London Zoo and she has a nut allergy, and as she walked past the elephant enclosure, the elephant reached out and, having recently eaten peanuts, <gasps> kissed her on the face, and she went... <laughs> poof, poof, poof. <laughs> <laughs> I know the elephant's trunk. I know her. Do you? Anaphylactic. <laughs> I used to go out with her. We met uh, bobbing for our pools. <laughs> I, Jimmy, actually, when I, I thinking back now, when I was about seven, a llama nearly ate my hair at the zoo. <laughs> Not all of it. People, but I was it? really small, so it and almost is... lifted me off the floor. Oh. It's like. <laughs> The interesting thing about that is that is still how Noel gets his hair cut. <laughs> He's done by llamas. I was absolutely furious. I had to be calmed down by the teacher. I don't know what I thought I was going to do. <laughs> I punched a goat in the face once. <laughs> is that, I could believe that from you. Is that true? I was in a petting zoo with my children and this goat started being too rough with my little boy. He knocked him over and I went, right, and I was looking, I went, boom, and I knocked the goat over. <laughs> I'll be honest, this doesn't show me the good light, but it was, no. a, it was a baby goat. <laughs> <laughs> that baby goat learned a valuable lesson yeah. there, <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you the Daily Mail headline is going to be Jonathan Ross punches kid. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's have a look at the scores. I can tell you that Alan and Michael have right. seven points. Jonathan and Ruth are in the lead with nine points. Surprisingly, <laughs> Nolan Richard trailing behind with two points. <laughs> So, it's the part of the show where I introduce a mystery guest. I want you, the panellists, to tell me who they are and why they made the news this year. Please welcome our mystery guest. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is uh, Daryl, uh, and he is the owner of the. Uh, uh, I don't want to give it away. Mammal. <laughs> <laughs> He's the owner of the mammal in question. Uh, what I want to know is uh, how, how, how did they I make the news? Say, I'm incredibly allergic to those mammals. <laughs> <laughs> incredibly allergic. Yes. Well, this is going to be much funnier than even we thought. <laughs> it's the question, what mammal is this? Because <laughs> I might know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what annoys me about cats and dogs? You stroke them, and that's, that's, that's it. That's the level I'm involved in. That's, that's where this massage is at. And then they just turn over and go, happy yes. ending? No. <laughs> yeah, well, has he accidentally stumbled upon your relationship with the cat? <laughs> no. <laughs> Was this cat in the news? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 oh, I know! <laughs> it's not just show and tell, no. Michael. <laughs> I was just going, I've got a friend called Darren, he's got a cat. Stick news. him in the show! <laughs> Fantastic. Has the cat changed its identity or look recently? Because if it's the cat I think it is, I think the cat looked quite differently. <gasps> Did the cat reason. used to be a dog? <laughs> <laughs> Was the cat involved in a clip on the internet? Yes. Does it play the keyboards? <gasps> no. <laughs> oh, it's not that cat that speaks that goes, Oh, what's that? I've seen that. I've seen that speaking again. Don't be alarmed, I'm pretty sure that, that only happens in Noel's head. It's amazing. OK, so you've got to write down how you think oh, got the down. cat made the news. That cat looks like he's ready to sort of leap off you at any second now. He's uh, yeah. running you out You can have a wander around punches. if you want. Oh. Well, not if he doesn't want to get punched. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone finished? Well, without further ado, let's, let's go, to, go to the answers. So, uh, Alan and Michael, what have you got? We okay. think it's the cat that was put into the bin. In a way oh, bin. It's horrible to say it out loud. Okay, like and Jonathan Ruth? Well, Ruth wrote the, the cat was rescued from a bin, which I think shows her in a good light because she immediately cut to the happy ending part of the story. <laughs> but I then filled it as initially put in the bin by a mad woman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, okay, and, and uh, Noel and Richard? Was dropped in a bin, the game's were. <laughs> was dropped in a bin? Yes. <laughs> Noel and Richard have got it right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a clip. If it's not, could you oh. could you just guard Lola's eyes so she doesn't see? I don't want her watching this. <laughs> Let's have a look and see what happens. Thank you. Surely not. Why would you do that? No, no, look, she's mental. Look, she's. <gasps> it's still shocking, isn't it? It's still you just. Why do you think she's allergic to them? <laughs> I think you played this all wrong. I think this round should have been the woman coming out here, then we had to guess who she was, and then Jonathan Ross could have punched her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you played this wrong. That was a much better idea. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Daryl and Lola the Cat. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> well, join us after the break, or the cat gets it. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz. It's summer and the hazy heat, the gentle waft of smoke and the smell of roasting meat can only mean one thing. Your house is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Let's remind ourselves of what happened in July and August. The Vatican said that the ordination of women was a sin on a par with paedophilia. Well, they'd know. <laughs> <laughs> there was anger over plans to build a mosque at Ground Zero in New York. To this day, it remains the most controversial ever episode of Grand Designs. <laughs> right, ready for some questions? Yeah. Of course you are, OK. <laughs> Can you tell me who made an unexpected late-night trip to the Hampstead branch of Snappy Snaps in July this year? Wow. Come on, you've got to fight back. What for? What for? For, for glory. There's a, there's a prize. There's, a, there's, there's a... no glory. <laughs> yeah, it is glory if you win. Come on. You right. can do this. Really? We, we try, we're trying hard. Okay, no, we're trying your hard. You could do this. Look, you could come back. You could make them look like fools. I was on the street. Someone put me in a bin, and then when they opened it, I was here. I hadn't asked. For <laughs> that, is, that is how we book oh, Noel Fielding. <laughs> Have a look at this clip of Boris Johnson. What on earth is he talking about? Who'd have thought? Uh, last year, that we were going to have this thing uh, on on the on the international agenda. This is uh, now, I think, going to be the subject of intensifying national controversy. I know that there are moves to ban it, and I'm under some pressure to say now that we will not have them at the Olympics. I, I, you know, at the moment, I have to say, I'm I'm undecided. It's obviously a very very 
intoxicating thing to pop, and people love popping it. I'm told uh, that they are increasingly popular in London, and we're going to have to look at it. All right, so what was he talking about? That's always the question I ask whenever I see him. OK. <laughs> and for our next question, it's over to the stars of Channel 4's Excellent Misfits. Hi, Hi Jimmy. Jimmy. Now, as you know, we all play characters with superpowers and misfits, but can you tell me which unlikely pundit's predictive powers gained him worldwide fame during the World Cup? Hmm? Mm. Is his superpower the tight pun? <laughs> <Germany, Germany. laughs> <laughs> it's exactly the sort of thing you would guess. It's that crazy. Is it? Mm. Lord only knows what they're writing down. OK. The country was gripped by the dramatic standoff between gunman Raoul Moat and the police, which took a bizarre twist when Paul Gascoigne turned up to try to help. Can you name three things Paul Gascoigne brought with him? Yes. So what did Paul Gascoigne bring along to try and help the Raoul Moat situation? OK, and for the next question, it's back to the kids of Mitchell Brook Primary School for another one of their one-of-a-kind school plays. Welcome to our show about cars. Yeah! This is our secret friend. <laughs> oh no, now people will know. You are spoiling it. I'll put this out. You're not allowed. Answers. I ask you, who took an unexpected trip to Snappy Snaps in Hampstead? OK, you've gone for Alan and Michael. George Michael. <laughs> Which is the correct answer, that, that, is, that is right. You've gone for John Well, Michael? we've gone. We've got inside information. George Michael, wham, just in case people didn't remember. Yog, because Yog is his nickname. <laughs> Where did you find this out? Was it on a piece of graffiti in Hampstead? No, Yog is his nickname. What, what does Yog? Does it mean something? I don't know. You, yo, G. No, it's like, Yog. Yo, 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 G. Blood. You're about the least urban person in the world. <laughs> and I know it's Yog because I've been. Okay, I'm dropping. It. I've been in his house when people have called him that name. He didn't know I was there. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I've been round his house since he came out from his little spell away. That's how I know. He actually phoned me while he was inside. Inside what? <laughs> Did he say, can you keep my moustache and beard while I'm in prison? <laughs> 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 I just smuggle it out for him. <laughs> Noel, Richard, what did you go with? Wamba. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you that. Yeah, I think yeah. I think you knew the answer clearly. Yeah. yeah. Have we got the have we got a picture? Have we got a picture of him? <laughs> <laughs> is that graffiti done in pencil? I mean, that, is that is that a preliminary sketch? And they're going to see how it is <laughs> and then go back in. <laughs> <laughs> Do it in pencil first. I'm not sure about it. Is that funny? Yeah, it's good. That's a midget fancy. <laughs> so you're saying... Why is that also that of all the shops on the high street to crash into, Snappy Snaps is the most visible? <laughs> I don't think he chose the shop he was going to crash into. You're gonna he not wasn't cruising it. up and down going, which one will it be tonight? <laughs> he definitely was cruising up and down saying, which one will it be tonight? <laughs> That's exactly what he was doing. <laughs> OK. We saw Boris Johnson rabbiting on about something or other. What did you think he was talking about? Jonathan, you went for... OK, no, I didn't go for anything. You can guess which one of us wrote this down. <laughs> and she's shifting uncomfortably even now. Not uncomfortably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ruth, you, you, you went with bumming. I guess you didn't know what he was talking about there. I mean, look at, look at his face now. <laughs> OK, uh, Noel, his tiny... Balls. <laughs> I like bird's eye peas, I've seen them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like when you see them in the freezer and they've escaped from the bag <laughs> and they've gone in on themselves. <laughs> We're looking at that. <laughs> These tiny frozen balls. <laughs> and they're also green. <laughs> I'm going to have to say you're wrong. You don't oh, get a point for that. Oh, come on. Uh, Michael and Alan, what do you think? Vavuzela. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that a lady place? What? 
<laughs> Vuvuzela. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you say? For JJ? <laughs> Is that yeah. when you decorate your vagina? Is that it? It's it's a wing, isn't it? Vajazzle. Yes. Vajazzle. He was talking about vajazzling at the Olympics, making it a sport. <laughs> the 100 metre vajazzle. <laughs> I am so watching that. Oh, I know. Let's hear from the man himself. I'm not going to diss the Bubazela. It's a fantastic machine, you know. It's a wonderful it's a wonderful it's skill, though. I, I, well, it's not, easy, it's not difficult. Uh, was the right answer. OK. Um, oh, good. OK, the Misfits ask you who showed uncanny powers of prediction during the World Cup. What did you put? Alan and Michael, you've gone for... Octopus. Jonathan. We, we put uh, Octopussy from Germany. Was his name for an extra point, Jimmy? Bluey. Uh, no, but I will take a point away because he was called Paul. That's right. <laughs> the German word for Paul is Bluey. <laughs> No, Richard. Uh, what, what I put with? that German snail, but I meant octopus. <laughs> <laughs> so genuinely, that was just a stab in the dark guess, <laughs> and you got to German snail. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know anything about blowy, <laughs> or whatever, blowy, <laughs> whatever it's called. Yeah. And Good I don't, old blowy. Why Paul the octopus? Sounds like a dickhead. <laughs> <But> <laughs> think, let's go back to the misfits and find out for sure. The answer was, of course, Paul the Psychic Octopus, oh. who correctly predicted the outcome of World Cup matches. <laughs> I like seem a little bit miffed we didn't know it. <laughs> OK, I asked you what Gaza brought Raoul Moat during his standoff with the police. <laughs> Did you get it? We went for fishing rod, chicken oh. and lager. <laughs> that, those are all correct. You could have also had a dressing gown. Did he bring him a dressing gown? He, or bought, he, he brought him. I, I'm, I'm very. I'm Sorry. amazed that it ended in tragedy <laughs> because he brought him some chicken, some lager, a fishing rod, and a dressing gown. Oh. We should send Gaza to the Middle East. He's really got some <laughs> ideas. <laughs> He's thinking outside the box. <laughs> uh, you went for uh, chicken, <laughs> lager, fishing rod. You yeah. got that as well. well John, we didn't football as well, but okay. He didn't bring but... football, but you still get it. Okay. No, and Richard went with. Remote control parrots. <laughs> <laughs> so is that two separate answers, remote control and parrots? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be an idiot. <laughs> remote control parrots, Tizer and Corks. <laughs> but he did have two remote control parrots. Sorry, this is Paul Gaskell who had remote control parrots? Yeah, he's got two. <laughs> so remote control parrots, that is massive. That's the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> And I looked on the internet to get some, and you can't get them. I don't know where he got them from. I bought them all up the week before. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, we asked the children of Mitchellbrook Primary School uh, to present another one of their unique school plays. What did you think they were acting out? The, the stig. Stig. With the a little stig. baby Richard Hammond. Um, OK, you gone with the stig, uh, Jonathan? We went Ruth? with the stig identity crisis. And you went for Nolan Barry Richard? Barry Sheen. <laughs> I've just demonstrated that you can actually do calligraphy with this pen. <laughs> Barry Sheen in calligraphy. <laughs> I don't see how that could be any more wrong. <laughs> OK, well, the answer was, of course, the stig. OK, now for a special bonus round. I'm going to show you stills from three of this year's biggest movies, which have all been subtly improved. Can you tell me what the films are? OK. <laughs> oh, that's hard. Okay, Why would you do the that, first? Jimmy? Why would you take a beautiful family image and rape it? I think that's better. <laughs> that is better than it was. OK, the second one? <laughs> I should have got that one. <laughs> and the third? <laughs> OK, you get a point here. You get a point for each film. Noel, Richard, surely to God you can get one of those. I'm really glad I'm on Jonathan's team, because the last time I think I went to the cinema was probably to see Star Wars in 1978. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Without further ado, I can tell you... OK, that was Toy Story 3, Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Again, because they made her forehead big, but mine is naturally like that. <laughs> and the last one from Kick-Ass. <laughs> I, could, I could play a seven-year-old. I've got a youthful skin. <laughs> OK, well, let's see what you got, OK? He's a film director. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Toy Story 3, Alice in Wonderland, Kick-Ass, they've got it absolutely right. Thank you. Yeah. As have Alan and Michael and Jonathan and Ruth, okay. but he, well, I'm much more impressed right. with you. Well done. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> leave on a high. <laughs> <laughs> Not even joking. 
<laughs> OK, you've all got those right. Let's have a quick look at the scores. Let me tell you that Alan and Michael have 16, Jonathan and Ruth are in the lead with 17, Nolan, Richard, 7. <laughs> Join us after the break when we'll be finding out the results of the paternity test. Can't wait. <laughs> so, welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year, and we're back to school with September and October. Let's remind you what was going on. Wayne Rooney was in the doghouse. You know, the doghouse. It's Liverpool's premier brothel. <laughs> Colleen was worried that Wayne was up to his old tricks again, but on this occasion, it turned out to be two young tricks at the same time. <laughs> William Haig denied rumours he was gay after sharing a hotel room with a male colleague. So William Haig's not gay. To be honest, I was more surprised when I found out he wasn't a giant baby. <laughs> right, let's have a look at some more questions. Sure. Uh, time for another guest question. This time, it's from Big Fat Quizzes BFF. Russell Brand. Hello, Jimmy. I'm sorry I can't be there with you to be on Big Fat Quiz of the Year. I no longer live on a conventional calendar or acknowledge New Year's, Christmas festivities. I've got my own calendar now. It's based on a decimal system. But I have decided to participate in your Big Fat Quiz, your Big Fat Money spinning career, by asking a question to the people there. Hello, Richard Arawadi. Hello, Michael McIntyre. Hello, Jonathan. Jonathan! <laughs> The question is this. We all know that a Pope came to our country this year. I believe it was in hmm, September. But how did a cardinal cause offence to our people, the people of Britain, by saying a thing that was offended to us? What was the thing that was said? Answer it, remember it, then say it. I'll do a funny version first, but then say it. <laughs> God love him. OK, so, so what did a cardinal say? <laughs> A cardinal said something right. pretty bad about this great nation. I know it. I told him, and he didn't believe. He couldn't believe that the cardinal would say such a thing. I well, know. I know. <laughs> Do not. I? I just turned that into like what? some gossip. Didn't <laughs> yeah. I? Yeah. I'm shocked by it. It's pretty bad, isn't it? It's pretty bad. Out of order. Okay. So have a look at this five-star shithole. Can you tell me where it is? This is from the brochure. That's hard, wasn't it? What is, it? is that a sink? Here's another guest question. This time, it's from Jamie Oliver, everyone's favourite chef. Hi, Jimmy. Last year, I spent a whole load of time teaching Americans how to do something a bit different with food. Can the teams tell me how one American put 40 pounds of Argentinian grilling steak to good use at a big award ceremony? Oh, <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> how are you doing, Richard? You all right? I don't know. I drifted off a bit, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, I didn't... It, yeah. Didn't it? Generally. Well, do you think Good, they you know, just checking in. Just oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'll tell you what, um, actually, it's very hard in our place to get the cold water pressure up. Do you know what I mean? In the shower, and that's it's just a nightmare. <laughs> but, on that, it's fine. <laughs> you know, as in, it's very hot, the shower, and we actually have to run the hot water just to, you know, take the edge off. <laughs> this isn't for you lot, this is just the... Yeah. Just checking in with how Richard's doing, apparently the cold water pressure, yeah. not great, but we'll try and... I guess we'll just have to, you know, soldier on. Sorry, I, I just made the mistake of genuinely responding to your question, which I thought was... A... <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was an inquiry. I always imagined you as a bath man. You have showers? <laughs> Are you high up? Is your flat high up? It is, but the cold water... <laughs> It can't reach high enough. Well, the cold water the might water. be in a tank above, even. We don't have a tank. I took the tank out. That might be the... That might be the problem. <laughs> I took the tank out. Why it, would you take yeah. the tank out? Because I wanted to put a big bean bag. <laughs> Rather yeah. than a water tank? Yeah. Can right. you not get a plumber? This, uh, this is what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I can get a plumber, but I want a reliable one, Ruth. Get Not a Welsh cowboy. one. Get a Welsh one. I live in London. No. <laughs> I have a plumber. I have a plumber for you. Has anyone got any clue what we're meant to be doing yes. at this point? <laughs> we were just about to solve it. Richard, I have a plumber. He's got his own plumber. <laughs> OK, time for another oh, yeah. Say What You See question. <laughs> there will be some pictures. You will say what you see. No one will talk about baths or showers. <laughs> no one. <laughs> OK, time for another Say What You See question. Can you tell me what the headline is? Oh, not one oh, of these again. Oh, 
Jimmy. Oh, for okay, God's it's... sake, Jimmy. <laughs> Come on, get something down. Okay. Oh, oh my God! It. Almost inadvertently done it. Okay. Can I just say, that. someone on Facebook is pretending to be me, and they put a scan, a picture of a scan on the other day. They said, oh, James Corden sent me a picture of his baby scan, as if I would do that. Oh, that's outrageous. So, can I just say... I'm well, that was me, Facebook. sorry. Well, stop <laughs> it! <laughs> I was told by someone on Twitter to get a life, and the person who said it called herself the real Anne Boleyn. be a dead Tudor. <laughs> okay, Russell Brand asked you how a cardinal caused offence ahead of the Pope's visit. Okay, <laughs> Alan and Michael, what, did you, what, what do you think the cardinal said? He said that we were like a third world country. Jonathan Ruth. I didn't have any clue of this at all. I thought it was probably to do with condoms, because he usually is harping on about that and saying they're a sin, isn't he? OK, Richard and Noel, what did you uh, go? We wrote Iggy Pope. Did you go? <laughs> <laughs> and I drew a Pope and then crossed his face out. <coughs> I couldn't look at his stupid face. And I said, the Pope said, we will wank. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's go back to Russell Brand and see what the, uh, the answer was. The correct answer to that question, now that you've indulged yourselves in ridiculous and unnecessary banter, probably writing <laughs> things down, doing drawings. Me and Noel Fielding started that. No one used to do funny drawings before me and Noel Fielding done the first time we won, which we won, quite rightly. The answer is that Cardinal Walter Casper said arriving in Britain is sometimes like arriving in a third world country. He said that about us. And they don't want us to bring down the church and all religions. Happy <laughs> <At> Christmas! <laughs> Yeah, where is he now? Sad, really. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you uh, where these yeah. grotty photos were taken. What did you have? Premier in York. <laughs> 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 oh, Alan. Oh. Lenny Henry lives there. I know. <laughs> he, he was coming out as I was going in. <laughs> We well, thought, was this in the, this in the news? <laughs> this is where the Commonwealth Games, the hotels that people that stay for the Commonwealth Games. This was the, 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 the basically the, the athletes' village uh, is where these photos were taken. The athletes, and this was about a week before or ten days before the games were due to start, and they were in this condition. Uh, Noel and Richard, where did you think these photos were taken? <laughs> we put Michaels. <laughs> That's my house. But not no. Mike. No, not you. Bublé. Bublé. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cross that out. You've not been there. <laughs> Jamie Oliver wanted to know which American made use of 40 pounds of steak at an award ceremony. Anyone remember? Lady Gaga's dress. Wonderful. OK, Jonathan Ruth. We said Lady Gaga's... We put Lady Gaga Gaga, because uh, you got excited by the thought of Lady Gaga. Her dress. OK, and dress. Noel and Richard. But what did you put? I put he grilled it first off. <laughs> and then I put Gaga bra underneath. <laughs> OK, uh, let's go over to Jamie and see what he thought it was. Of course, it was Lady Gaga. She wore an entire dress made out of meat. It's not that weird, because actually, I've got a nice pair of pants made out of pork. It's normal. <laughs> so you all got that exactly wrong. Well done, yeah. everyone. Was it actual? It was actual beef, mate. It They're was just... actual beef. But the thing is, when she was sat down, right, did she have knickers on? And if she didn't, that means she was actually sitting and her fufu was on some actual beef. <laughs> <laughs> it was apparently a, an anti-war statement. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's clear, wasn't it? OK, next up uh, was the Say What You See puzzle. What did you get? Alan got this. Yeah. Go, go, go. Alan Cricket got this. Cricket match fixing scandal. Wow. Oh. Come on. Yeah. OK, yeah. Jonathan Ruth, you got that? We got cricket match, fix scandal. Fine, oh. that will do. Uh, Noel and Richard? <laughs> <laughs> we got cricket match, then we ran out of steam, so I just drew Jimmy Savile. <laughs> that fantastic. I think it looks like That's him. pretty good, actually. <laughs> OK, uh, let's have a quick look at the scores. Let's just quickly check in. Alan and Michael have 19 points. Jonathan and Ruth are just ahead with 20 points. Noel and Richard have got eight. <laughs> OK, now as a special treat, we've got a bonus round all about this year's television. 
Before the invention of TV, people had to entertain themselves by watching talent shows or dancing competitions. <laughs> All that's changed now, of course. Let's have a look at some of this year's highlights. Just a small town girl. Starship Whitaker! <laughs> I'm the doctor. It's your ultimate housemate, Brian! The name's Sherlock Holmes and the address is 221B Baker Street. You saw a clip from Ultimate Big Brother there, which featured the memorable housemates from across all the series. But what improbable explanation did everyone's favourite screaming halfwit, Nicky Graham, suggest for fellow housemate Nadia's apparent grumpiness? And the clue is, it was improbable. <laughs> OK. You've you got that? OK. Lovely. Junior Apprentice I aired this year, that. giving a group of teenagers <laughs> the chance to kickstart their business careers. But what reason did 17-year-old Tim Ankers yeah. give for not making enough cheese yeah. snack boxes? So what yeah. apprentice? Oh, the junior apprentice. This was junior apprentice. You know, the young... Did you not see it? junior it was amazing. apprentice. Yes, it was, it was incredible. Great. Alan Sugar was hiring children. <laughs> You're not allowed to hire children. He wasn't no wonder the economy's fucked. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If you... Cos, like, they're looking for the, the next wave of entrepreneurs and businessmen. But, and you are both brilliant comedians. <laughs> but if you didn't do that, could you get a job, do you think? What would you do? I can't imagine you having a proper job, Michael. Have you ever had a job in the real world? Am I on the Jonathan Ross show? No, no. <laughs> no one's on the fucking Jonathan Ross show anymore. <laughs> I've had jobs. I took raisins off the back of a lorry for fruit and fibre. She took raisins <laughs> off the back of a lorry. Is Not that why they grow them? They're in boxing. <laughs> 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 I won't bring me lunch. <laughs> do you know what I would do if I wasn't what I do? I would like to marry people. Like, be a registrar. That's nice. I think they had bigamist yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> I did work in a bakery for one day. <laughs> but the boss went off and I, when he came out, I was lying down eating cakes. <laughs> Oh, the best thing about that is I know 100% absolutely true. <laughs> That's so true, it's brilliant. OK, all right, have you all got something for these? Final one. Take a look at this clip from this year's I'm a Celebrity. Oh, You're all right, OK? Just cover it in grips. Good We'll explain exactly what's going on, OK? Right. I feel really ill. Oh, 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 oh. Let's get Bob in. <laughs> Okay, that was uh, Gillian McKeith there from uh, How Clean Is Your Poo, or whatever. <laughs> whatever nonsense she used to present, the made-up doctor. Um, <laughs> made-up doctor. I'm more of a doctor than she is. Anyway, Gillian McKeith there. But can you name three things she smuggled into the jungle in her knickers? Oh, I know one. And when I say smuggled into the jungle in her knickers, that is not a euphemism. Genuinely, she smuggled stuff into the jungle in her knickers. <laughs> Have a guess, come on. OK, all right, here we go. I wanted to know what explanation Nikki gave for Nadia's grumpiness in Ultimate Big Brother. Did anyone get this? We thought period. She might have thought she was menstruating. OK. And that's because you gave us a heavy clue there. I did give you a clue there, Jonathan. Interestingly, Richard and Noel decided to ignore that heavy clue. <laughs> and they went with... Hay hey fever. <laughs> I've never watched Big Brother. And look at, I didn't, look at her face. Why Just would I want to watch that? <laughs> <laughs> she is hilarious. All right, I'll show you, I'll like show you what she said. Board. <laughs> I'm, I'm look at it. You know what Nadia's like when she's trying to talk? It's almost like she kind of talks quite loudly. And it was only a place, do you know what I mean? But in this house, it sends you crazy, doesn't it? Maybe Nadia's on her period. <laughs> yeah. Unlikely, but maybe. <laughs> Michael, you went with, uh, pregnant. No, well, <laughs> we said she was on a period. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but, 
and you, you spell that you how? You just cheated. You spell that our way. <laughs> no, OK, you put pregnant. OK, I asked you for the explanation Tim Ankers gave for his poor cheese-selling abilities. What did you put? We put child labour is wrong. <laughs> Statement rather than the actual answer. Okay. Um, oh, <laughs> incredibly. Oh, Jonathan and Ruth, you've gone for. Too, it was too windy. I love that show. He was making it out there when they asked. Him, I'm sure that's the yeah. answer. And he said it was too windy, which had nothing to do with making cheese rolls. But obviously, it was the thing he remembered for his nice day out. Okay. <laughs> no, and Richard, you, you yeah. incredibly. <laughs> he said wind, and I added. Windy pops. pops. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that situation. There's no way he could have done it under those conditions. It was, I mean, it was, it was gale force, didn't it? Gale force. It was and very blustery. The, the problem was he had crackers and they were just flying out like hell. Because they are lighter than you think, crackers, they're very, aren't they? They're lighter than wind. Is the problem. Uh, let's have a look. I know it's like a small thing, but it was like a wind tunnel behind us. I was doing the, the packed lunches, but then I, you know, there were customers waiting, so I thought it's more important to Didn't get Didn't you sell customers. them straight away as soon as you made them? Yeah, they were going. Like well, hotcakes. Why didn't you make any more then? I wanted to make more. Who well, stopped you? The customers being there, there weren't enough people in the store. Oh, not the wind now then? Oh, oh and the, yeah. And the wind, the wind also. Yeah. <laughs> wind is my least favourite weather type. <laughs> That is my best thing ever. Wind is my least favourite. My least favourite. I mean, we've all got a top three least favourite by the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> OK. All right, did anyone get what Gillian McKeith was smuggling into the jungle in her knickers? OK, Jonathan Ruth? Oh, yes. Spices. Spices. Herbs and spices. What's her name? She's called Gillian McKeith. Oh, I thought it was Rod Hull. No, she did not. <laughs> no, Ruth just said to me... Jesus. Ruth didn't say she said, did she put them up? <laughs> Ruth! Jump. Well, it seems like the, that's what they do going through airports, isn't it? Well, we're finding all about your past now, aren't we? <laughs> uh, Norman Richard, what did you go with? Uh, Sean Ryder. <laughs> <And clock. laughs> and you've also gone with Richard? A clock and rubies. <laughs> Alan, George Michael, what did, you, what did you get for this? Well, we did salt, George Foreman, lean mean grilling machine. <laughs> 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 Oh, the expression yeah. on her face, you can see, look. I think she's left it on by mistake. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can tell you, well, you could have had, you could have had a miso soup, dry and liquid, stock cubes, rock salt, dried herbs, nettle tea bags, chilli and garlic powder. In Gillian's defence, all of those things should be stored in a, a dry, cold place. <laughs> Really dirty, ready, steady cook, isn't it? <laughs> what have you got? Well. <laughs> okay, now, because you've been so good, we've got a special guest for you. Oh. One of this year's breakout stars. It's Mr. Louis Spence. Yeah! Nice to see you. No worries. No worries. Louis, you. No. you look uh, fantastic as ever. Yeah, I do, don't I? Of course I you made do. an effort, I'm like you. <laughs> I've made an effort for you. Yeah, <laughs> but, but come on, it's meant to be the new year, isn't it? A bit of sparkle or something, you boring <laughs> fun. <laughs> Can I ask Louis a question? I was just wondering if you had to come out to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, I was born out. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I just came out like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now Louis, you're here for a reason. Yeah. You're gonna, as a as a as a as a gift to the nation, you're gonna enact one of the biggest news stories of the year yeah. in interpretive dance. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Our panel have to guess what good. the news story is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna step back because I imagine this is gonna get physical. You ready for this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Louis Spence, everyone. Music.
own fucking event. Uh, judges' comments? Powerful. <laughs> OK, you've got to write down what was the news story. I mean, that was an incredible piece of... It was more of a piece of theatre. Remarkable. Beautiful, Louis. I was moved I tears. was very moved. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I know what Alan's thinking. <laughs> that was my favourite bit. Happy. <laughs> See, I don't need to... Oh, it's hilarious. Oh, oh. <laughs> so I've got a bit... I've got a bit dizzy. Okay, I, I can't off. believe Louis Spence is here. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, what have you put? Jane McDonald leaving loose women. <laughs> <laughs> it was that bit across the thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I thought that's Jane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Jonathan and Ruth, you we. Were... Uh... We think this was Wayne Rooney's baby being conceived, <laughs> and then over here it was being born. <laughs> and it was How did excited they... by the, and the signing internet. autographs. Well, I mean, our last our last hope is is Noel and Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to touch the pen. <laughs> you thought um, it was Downton Abbey. Yeah. <laughs> you thought that dance was about Downton Abbey. Yeah. That one. So clearly he was the, the Chilean miners. Oh. Oh. How oh. did you not get... Did you get that, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. They all got that. I thought right. that was an incredible piece of interpretive dance. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, Mr. Louis Spence. Oh. Couldn't have better than that. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, no, we're going to do scores. Oh. Alan and Michael have 20 points. <laughs> Jonathan and Ruth are in the lead of the century. Noel and Richard have nine, nine points. <laughs> well, Louis has promised to polish up my Charleston. <laughs> so we're going to have a quick break. See you in two. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. As the fireworks of November career uncontrollably into the hedge of December, let's remind ourselves what happened all those months ago. George W. Bush released his memoirs. They remain to this day Spellcheck's greatest ever achievement. <laughs> Students took to the streets to protest at increased tuition fees. Students will find it very hard to find a job if they were involved in the rioting. Or if they weren't. <laughs> Ireland's economy effectively went bust. The situation has got so bad, they've put in place a special task force to start double-checking the ends of rainbows. <laughs> Let's crack on uh, with the final part of the quiz. Yeah. Right. Of course, it wouldn't be the Big Fat Quiz without a news flash from Jon Snow in the Channel 4 newsroom. He's got a special bulletin here based on one of the year's biggest songs. Over to you, John. A deranged aristocrat and her ample-booted companion have complained <laughs> to the authorities after being bombarded with nuisance phone calls. The pair issued a plea for the prankster to stop calling, stop calling, <laughs> revealing that he had caused a series of interruptions to their daily routine, most annoyingly ringing them in the club when they're sipping that bub. When asked to comment, one of the victims, famed for her eccentric attire, said, I'm kind of busy. Stop phoning me. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> OK, so what song is Jon Snow going on about? Oh, Come on, it's a big hit. Oh, is it? That's right. right. We don't, we, we've lost. There's no point. <laughs> OK. In December, angry activists launched revenge attacks on websites such as Amazon, PayPal, MasterCard and Visa. Who are they defending? Oh. Iowardi's on it. <laughs> OK. Well, I think Jonathan's got it, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. OK. Have a look at this amazing piece of Taiwanese news footage. Can you tell me what story is being reenacted here? Ali 
Okay, what news story was that? Okay. Radio 4's James Nocte landed himself in hot water after mispronouncing someone's Nocte. name and accidentally swearing in the process whose name did he get wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Don't write what he said because he said a bad thing. <laughs> I'll just check on what Richard's written before we say anything. I'll just have a little check. I didn't, uh... <laughs> Yeah. I don't know whether we can say that. <laughs> so, ask me, ask me what the Welsh word for first is. What's the Welsh word for first? Cuntav. <laughs> There's nothing rude. wrong with that. No. Nothing wrong with that, cos that's Welsh. Ask me <laughs> what the Japanese word for Jimmy Carr is. <laughs> Let's move on with the show. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next one. Have a look at this picture. What is it and why was it in the news? Oh, what's that? Baked beans. New. It's a sign for new, isn't it? Is this a close-up shot of what was in Julian McKee's knickers? <laughs> <laughs> OK. So we've reached the final question of the year. Who better to see us off? Than Seth Rogen. Have a look. Hi, Jimmy. I got a question about one of my all-time favorite heroes, Mr. Dick Van Dyke. In November, he made the news after falling asleep on his surfboard, he drifted out to sea. Can the teams tell me what unlikely group of heroes came to his aid? So who saved Dick Van Dyke? <laughs> Sounds like a comedy song somehow. <laughs> okay, let's get something down. You ready for the final answers? Yeah. Jon Snow reported on one of the biggest songs of the year. Did you know what it was? Lady Gaga Telephone. Lady Gaga. Oh, like Beyonce did nothing on that track. Oh. <laughs> What'd you go for, Noel Richard? We put Gaga. Yeah, Phony Gaga. That's Phony fun. Gaga, that, yeah. that will do. Phony, that's, yeah. uh, that's a terrific oh, effort from so you. So points all round, then? I think near enough, yeah, why not? OK. Can we have uh, 25 points for that? <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> I asked you who the people attacking Amazon, PayPal, Mastercard and Visa were protecting. Uh, what did you put? I don't know the actual name, but it's like that WikiLeaks man, isn't it? Julian Assange is the guy's name, but WikiLeaks man will do. Uh, WikiLeaks will do, Jonathan WikiLeaks. and Ruth. And you've gone for Nolan Richards. <laughs> OK, so you've gone for Wikipedia. It wasn't directly... <laughs> ..under threat. <laughs> um, but that man has had to put up an appeal on the page. I don't know if you've seen it. <laughs> yes. and, uh, what is that appeal about? He just needs um, uh, someone to babysit for him. <laughs> uh, He's dominating the whole page. Yeah. He, he, you can't get a good sitter. I mean, what kind of thing? <laughs> well, that point. Okay. I, I asked you what story was being reenacted in this piece of Taiwanese news footage. Did you all get it? Prince William's engagement. To Kate Middleton. It was, of course, the royal engagement. When he did get engaged to her, I saw an interview on the BBC and the, the bloke that was doing the interview said, Did you say yes? And I just thought, of course she <laughs> fucking said yes. <laughs> you idiot. She's got a massive ring on. They're here in the studio. It'd be embarrassing if she said no. Are you... <laughs> Okay, you've all got that right. I'm looking for. I, I'm really looking for the world wedding. Are you looking for oh, the world yeah. wedding? Are you going to look? Are you going to? Oh, yeah. You going to watch it? I'm counting down the days. Are you going to wear? Something, <laughs> are you going to wear something special when you watch your house? Taking Paul the octopus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to smuggle loads of meow meow in my knickers. <laughs> okay, I asked you whose name did Radio 4's James Nockety get wrong? Hold it, James Nockety. I thought it was James Naughty. Is it actually James Nockety? It's pronounced Nockety, but it's, uh, it's spelt Naughty. Well, Nockety, isn't it? It's not Nockety, it's like Nockety Knock. Nockety Knock. But no wonder he's mispronouncing his other name. If his own name is Nockety, no wonder when he looks at a normal name spelled down, he thinks, oh, it sounds like something else. <laughs> That's his accent, by the way. <laughs> he's Icelandic. He got Jeremy Hunt's name wrong. Uh, and he you've got to be careful on the radio, haven't you, Jonathan? He switched one letter. <laughs> he switched one letter. <laughs> Two years. Two years, I know. Yeah, yeah, it's because he's the culture secretary. <laughs> you mix them up. Sorry, he's the culture secretary. That's yeah. in Jeremy Hunt. Yes. It's yeah. interesting because you've written what? Formula One driver from the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> James Hunt. Sorry. Let's have a listen. What's happening in the course of the next hour? Well, first I'll be talking to Jeremy Cunt, uh, Hunt, the culture secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Broadband. 
he tries to stifle It's them. 8 o'clock on Monday, the 6th of December. American officials have condemned WikiLeaks after the website published a list of hundreds of facilities said to be vital for American security. Every community in Britain has been promised to have access to the fastest broadband networks within five years. <coughs> Excuse me, and Egypt has called in international shark experts to investigate a series of attacks in the Red Sea. <coughs> Pardon me for copying that. Very good. The news comes from Rory Morrison. <laughs> I like the way he said Egypt once he'd really messed it up. He went, Egypt! <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, so Jeremy Hunt is the right answer. Oh, but... Noel and Richard, what did you get for that last one? John Poobum. <laughs> John Poobum <laughs> face. <Ew>. John Poobum. <laughs> Probably for the best, you crossed out what you originally had there, which was... <clears throat> very unpleasant. <laughs> I always thought they should do that at the watershed, because they say that 9 o'clock is the watershed where you can swear. So on the 9 o'clock news, they could go... Doot, 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 fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Just to ease you into the watershed. <laughs> I'm Moira fucking Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you've just tuned in, Moira Stewart has changed. <laughs> OK, uh, I asked you to take a look at this picture. Why was it in the news? What did you get? It's a bacteria that eats Is it Gillian McKeith's pants? <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is, uh, that's exactly the right answer. It is a bacteria oh. that eats arsenic. See, I told you. It's a brand you. new form of life. Wow. That no one thought existed before. Oh. And Jonathan and Ruth, you went with? Well, I actually thought they were washed baked beans. We thought it was like a bad <laughs> health thing, like a salmonella outbreak yeah. in perhaps a hospital. And you're what saying you, it's not a top shot of a Kojak convention. <laughs> <laughs> you thought that was an aerial photo of a Kojak convention? OK. Seth yes. Rogen wanted to know... This is a final question, final answer of the quiz. OK, final one. Final Seth answer. Rogen wanted to know who came to <laughs> Dick Van Dyke's aid when he floated out to sea. What did you put? Porpoise. <laughs> well, well, I, I wanted to put dolphin, but Michael said porpoise. <laughs> I upgraded his dolphin. <laughs> porpoise. Yeah, no, porpoise is exactly... What did you go for, no Nolan Richard? We said uh, he slept with a porpoise with no Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can't <laughs> confirm that that is the right answer, but I will give you a point for that because it's got purpose in it. Got what in it? Wait. Purpose. <laughs> you said purpose. <laughs> you said purpose. <laughs> sir, sir, you said purpose. <laughs> Jonathan Ruth, you went with. Point. Poi you want a shit like that and eat thunder. I can only apologise, ladies and gentlemen. We all seem to have turned into Popeye in the last 20 minutes. What is the purpose of that? Jimmy, here's the thing about this story. Who told us about the porpoises rescuing Dick Van Dyke? I think it was Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke. So he fell asleep on a surfboard and he reckons porpoises pushed him into land. Who, sorry? Poibuses. So, <laughs> Dick Van Dyke was, for many years, a very heavy drinker and, by his own admission, an alcoholic. To the extent that, and I've read his book when it came out, which was very good, he says that when he went to see Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, you've all seen Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, it's hard to forget, he sat there watching at the premiere and he couldn't remember filming any of it. <laughs> That's how much he was drinking. He was on a bottle and a half of gin a day. He cannot remember one scene of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. This is the man who we're going to trust when he says, on a surfboard while asleep, porpoises pushed him into land. <laughs> I don't think. He's basically the Hollywood equivalent of Noel Fielding. <laughs> That's what I he's saying. He's did mad. did get rescued out of a pond. <laughs> out of a puddle, actually. <laughs> by a starfish. <laughs> It's going to be one of the questions next year if you're going to watch. Me and Dick Van Dyke were in a puddle, <laughs> out of our minds, on Meow Meow. <laughs> let's, have, let's, let's hear from Seth Rogen. Let's get the definitive answer. Did everyone get it? Mr. Dick Van Dyke was pushed back to shore by a school of porpoises. That is crazy. Uh, I was actually fortunate enough to have Mr. Dick Van Dyke be a vocal coach uh, of mine for an upcoming project, and he taught me the perfect English accent. It goes like this. Merry Christmas, mate. <laughs> Happy New Year. Thank you. That, ladies and gentlemen, is your lot. Uh, let's tot up the final scores. Oh, if you're playing at home, there were a possible 36 points on offer this evening. How did you do? Uh, I'll tell you how the teams did. In last place. It was always going to happen, but a very brave attempt, I feel, 
Um, well, we're all winners here. Your way to gain power. Yeah, but you said purpose. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe I'm the idiot. Twelve <laughs> points. Noel Field and Richard Arwadi. <laughs> In second place, Alan Carr and Michael McIntyre. Twenty-five points. Uh, Come on, that's something. We can be that many of them. But the winners of this year's Big Fat Quiz of the Year, it's Jonathan Ross and Ruth Jones with 28 points. Look at that. I've even got you a trophy, guys. Congratulations. Well done. Oh, wow. So well done. There's your trophy. A big thank you to all our amazing panel, to all of you for watching at home, all our special guests. Thank you very much indeed. I'm Jimmy Carr. That was the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. Good night. to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. A quiz so big and fat that Channel 4 are dissecting it live on Thursday night. <laughs> you can play along at home, simply fetch a pen and paper from the kitchen, notice a bottle of Baileys, pour yourself a glass, forget why you went into the kitchen, open the fridge and begin eating. <laughs> Let's meet our teams. First up, someone who pays great attention to what goes into his mouth and someone who pays very little into what comes out of his, Jamie Oliver and Jonathan Ross. <laughs> Next up, we have a team that look like a couple of Christians that got married in college and have grown apart. <laughs> it's David Williams and Miranda Hart. <laughs> and finally, a team of opposites, a flamboyant, jet-setting movie star and a straight-laced history enthusiast. They may not agree on everything, but the makeup sex is always amazing. It's David Mitchell and Eddie Izzard. <laughs> Jonathan, Jamie, you've got a, a team name? We're going to call ourselves the Lisping Ninnies. My tongue gets in the way quite a bit, and he can't say what. <laughs> he can't say what. <laughs> <laughs> is that the technical I can say, term? I can say what. I just can't say it. <laughs> what, what, like the word. Let's be ninnies. Can, Jamie, can you say that? No. <laughs> <laughs> or anything to do with sausages. <laughs> Hold on. I might need a cloth out here. This is getting quite wet already. <laughs> It's electrical equipment, it's dangerous. OK, so the lisping ninnies, yes. David and Miranda? Miranda wanted lesbi friends. <laughs> lesbi friends is a great name for a team. I also, I wanted Groove Matrix. No, I The name like that. of the band that Ant and Deck had in Biker Grove. Because like them, we're down with the kids. <laughs> Do you prefer lesbi friends? Lesbi friends? Homo, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, David, what have you come up with? Well, we came up with David Mitchell as an idea. Well, I didn't come. I wouldn't. I, I just thought, well, it's David Mitchell. Your, your team was called David Mitchell. This well, wasn't my idea. That I was thought my that idea. would. Yes, I thought I might seem self centered. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. we're called Nexus Six. <laughs> Nexus Six. Nexus yeah. Six. Nexus if you know Blade Runner, Nexus Six, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> it, they were very cool. They, uh, they were robots, which is slightly different to us. Yeah. But apart from that, they could kill or have very good sex. So I'm like, I'm like a robot that can kill or have sex. Yep. Yeah. I don't think you've even seen that film. I don't remember the Nexus Six in that, frankly. Okay. Although, Jimmy, seeing as you are a robot, you could perhaps <laughs> pull us in. I think you look more human when you try and pretend you're a robot. 
<laughs> the humanity comes out in those moments. Right, let's get started. A lot happened this year. It was like an episode of Lark Rise to Candleford, except that a lot happened. <laughs> and it only feels like it lasted 12 months. We start with January and February. Elton John and David Furnish had a baby boy after donating sperm. Just goes to show what you can do if you both pull together. <laughs> the Arab Spring protest started, beginning an unstoppable movement that just kept on running. And if you've ever eaten Tunisian street food, you'll know exactly how that feels. <laughs> of course, it wouldn't be a quiz without questions, so let's get on with it. OK, first lot of questions. Eyes down. You ready? To kick things off, here's a question from international singing superstar CeeLo Green. Over to you, CeeLo. Hello, Jimmy. 21-year-old sports student Tom Cowan hit the news back in February after his work experience placement went badly wrong. What happened? So Tom Cowan's work experience went badly wrong. What happened? What sport was it? If, it if it's not swimming, he won't know. Really. He doesn't know anything about swimming. <laughs> Swimming's not a sport. What can you do to stop drowning? <laughs> <laughs> Second question. If you've seen the Big Fat Quiz before, you'll know that every year the children of Mitchellbrook Primary School in Neesden put on a rather unconventional school play. It's always adorable. What story are they acting out here? Politics, Europe, economy. What was that? Hee hee hee, you can't catch us. So you've got to write down what news story? Look That's at Eddie's right. concentration what? face. OK. <laughs> OK, next question. <laughs> Whose comments were described as appalling, prehistoric and totally and utterly wrong in January this year? Did Clarkson have a book out in January? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't give anything away. What, have, you got some, have you got something, David, Eddie? Yeah, just, just we're just. What are you doing under the desk? Are you googling? Yeah. You're not googling. Are you googling? Why not? If you're, are you? What do you mean you're googling? <laughs> give me your phone. Give me, give me your phone. Give me your phone. Give me your phone. Get his phone. Get his phone. Get his phone. Get it, Miranda. Get it. Get it. Get it. Nexus six. No, we need your iPhone. Okay, I'll switch it off and we'll put it somewhere where you can see it. So there we go. It's off. I can't believe and Nexus 6 cheated. <laughs> Miranda, keep an eye on. I'm having a close on you, Izzard. <laughs> Why is cheating so bad? <laughs> okay, so you... maybe he cheated when he said he ran those marathons. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> my God! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, stop googling things. Uh, okay, what's the next question? Um, take a look at this picture. Which banned product is she advertising? Oh, I know what that is. <laughs> is it banned? Oh, I know. Yeah, that's a, it's a banned product. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I think I want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, all I'm going to say, Miranda, all I'm going to say is I, I gave you one job to do. I said keep an eye out for that phone. Where's it gone? Where's the phone gone? Where's my phone? <laughs> oh, that's some acting skill right so... there. <laughs> He's he got it there! It's take it away. It Seriously, can't... Jimmy, it take it away. Anywhere. Can't you see, at school... I'm happy leaving it there. Jimmy, at school you could see David was the kind of boy squealing on everyone else, going, Sir, he's got a book at the back. <laughs> Take it away, sir. <laughs> at least I went to school. <laughs> in, in Jonathan's defence, they didn't have schools when he was growing up. <laughs> everyone finished? Yes. 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 All finished. OK, lovely, all right. Let's have some answers. OK, so CeeLo Green asked you how 21-year-old Tom Cowan's work experience placement went awry. What did you all get? David and Miranda. Caught photocopying genitals. <laughs> You think he was caught photocopying his genitals when he was on the work experience? And you remember reading this story in the papers, do you? Wait. I remember dreaming it. <laughs> right, yeah. And we've done a little picture. Well, I, look, Miranda did, I did it. That, <laughs> that was oh, the Miranda. last penis she saw. It looked like that. <laughs> okay, I can tell. That is not, that is not the correct answer. What, oh. what did you two go for? He was shot by Ashley Cole with an air gun. Okay. Jonathan, Jamie, what have you put there? We That's... put shot by Ashley Cole, because, but we knew it. We didn't Google it. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, I thought uh, it might have been one of uh, one of Jamie's work experiences, boys, because they're always getting locked in the freezer, aren't they, and just yeah. left there. Getting tied up, put in freezers, getting up vegetables pushed in places, and yeah. sounds wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you can apply if you want. We're taking in for next year. Sign him up. <laughs> Let's go back to CeeLo Green for the answer. Did you get it? Tom Cowan had the misfortune of being accidentally shot by an air rifle by Ashley Cole. Well, that's what I call a bad day at the office. <laughs> Why would you take an air gun to football yeah. training? To shoot Why? one of the work experience kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my rationale. I would take it there because that would be hilarious. <laughs> Next, what were the kids of Mitchellbrook Primary School acting out? Any thoughts? Downing Street oh, has so... got a new cat. <laughs> that is the correct answer. Mm. Really? David Williams, Miranda Hart, what did you go for here? The, the Lion, Lion King. King. <laughs> dressed up as a lion. And there were other animals and in it. And then they sang, Can you, you feel, feel the love tonight? Tonight. <laughs> the circle of life. Akuna Matata. It's a wonderful Just thing. Akuna Matata. I don't think that's Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. <laughs> it's a wonderful <laughs> thing, thing, Jimmy. So they acted out the Lion King. <laughs> That's what we saw. <laughs> Jonathan, Jamie, what did you go for? Well, I, I, the cat got the job. It got a new cat at number 10. <laughs> and to tell you the truth, Jim, uh, having cooked at number 10 a few times, they do have the worst kitchen of any kitchen that I've ever worked in. Right. Really? They've got a bad kitchen? Right. Proper. Who have you cooked Pokey. for? Right. I've cooked for loads of people. What do you want? Well, right. well you've just said number 10. <laughs> I know you've cooked for lots of people. I've seen you on TV. Wait, please, who do you want? But, what, <laughs> which, which prime ministers? All of them. We can't all of them. I mean, there's people with prime minister about some 400 years ago. Pit the younger, Pitt the elder, no, Disraeli. All, all, all the ones that are important. Well, Church Winston Churchill was important. <laughs> He's a little bit dead, but, you know, he'd probably still appreciate it. What did you do? Cheese toasty? No, I did a... Well, it was tough because it was just before everything started growing. It was in the early spring. You get lots of things from Sainsbury's, Jamie. <laughs> We had a great time. It was an honour to do it. Yeah. When I did the meal, right, um, basically, I had mushrooms. St George mushrooms were just coming out, which are the same ancestry as, as the death cap. Which, so I could have as... actually used death cap and I could have killed them all. And we'd be in such a better state right now, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> you missed your chance. In all honesty, I genuinely could have. Uh, <laughs> no. If I wanted to, I could. You know what? <laughs> How Essex are you? So he... I could have killed them all. One, one, one. You're saying that all of the world's problems that we now face are thanks to you. <laughs> you I had, I you could had have your opportunity yeah. and you didn't take it. <laughs> now, and you've got the gall to come on television <laughs> in this terrible world that we live in now and just say, yeah, that's my fault. I, just, I couldn't be bothered to poison them. <laughs> I would argue that by just killing you political do. leaders, it doesn't quite solve problems. It doesn't well, you never know either. until you try. Well, <laughs> shame on you, Oliver. Shame on you. <laughs> uh, I asked whose comments were described as appalling, prehistoric and totally and utterly wrong. Who did you go for? David and Miranda, what have you put? Bungle from Rainbow. <laughs> oh, oh, he calls this a Oh. To be fair, Zippy was a <laughs> <laughs> OK, what have, you, what have you gone for, John? We really thought it was the, the guy... It was Andy Gray, and the other one, I don't know his name. Yeah. The, someone the presenters who, uh, from Sky Yeah, the Sports, Sky... The, the no, we, we couldn't remember. <laughs> That's what we were Googling. Yeah. We couldn't remember the other one's <laughs> I knew it was Andy Gray. It's Richard something. Oh! Yeah. Oh! Sexist pigs. Oh. I, you can give me a point. Keys. Richard Keys, that's Keys. right. It was Richard Keys. Keys. Come back to me. Richard Keys. It's it wasn't just, Bungle. Just, just a few minutes too late. <laughs> <much. laughs> it wasn't Bungle, it was okay. Richard Keys. Bungle it's an easy mistake oh, to make. Oh, why isn't it working? Because right. it's over. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve a point for Keys. They didn't know these stupid bastards here, did oh. they? <laughs> well, maybe I'd you like should have tried cheating. <laughs> Uh, David, uh, Eddie, what did you go for? You want... We were Andy, Andy Gray and... And then we were... Put Rob we I think you'll find it was Richard it was... Keyes. <laughs> simply trying to Google the answer and... Oh. All right, well, I could tell you that you're, you're, it was Andy Gray and Richard Keyes on, on Sky making those, those... How specific did we have to be? Because we got half right and the presenters... We said Sky sexist. Also, it's I think, now, I think you both get a point for that. That's, that's near enough. <laughs> <laughs> OK, final question in this round. Um, what was the woman advertising that was banned? Uh, you've gone for David and Miranda. Vanilla ice cream. <laughs> you think that's been banned? <laughs> yeah, because... Yeah, it's not as nice as chocolate. 
<laughs> That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> but also, because I do actually know the answer to this, and I think vanilla ice cream's as disgusting as the real answer when you really think about it. Well, how do you know the right answer to this but you didn't write it down? Because I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> what point are you trying to make? Well, the answer was that it's made of breast milk, the ice cream. Sorry, what point were you making? My point, <laughs> my point is you might go, oh, that's disgusting. But if you really think about it, vanilla ice cream is made from a cow's udder and that's disgusting. Well, it's not so made from a cow... It comes from a cow's udder. They don't yeah. cut the udder out and, and make the vanilla. <laughs> that would be pretty yeah, unpleasant. Would be Actually, a cow's be... udder is a cow's breast, so it comes from breast milk. Exactly. Comes from breast milk of a cow. It's human breast milk, which was yummy when we were small, but now not so good. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, can, I can tell you, thanks to, thanks to our friends at the Ice Creamists, we have some uh, breast milk ice cream. This is unacceptable! Um, OK. <laughs> OK, there you go. Grab one. Honestly, I will gag. I'll come back. Jimmy, Jamie was all over this. He not only knew it straight away, he, knew, he knows how much it costs. It's £14 pound a scoop. It's £14 pound a scoop, apparently. Where's Izzard going? Where's Izzard going? He's doing that. Uh, all I will say to Jamie is... <laughs> if we do... All I will say to if we booked Hester Blumenthal, he would have it. Come on. Mate, I'm, I'm a bit sensitive. I had a medical the other day. I will throw up. Absolutely <laughs> delicious. I can't. I can't. No, you're not going to bring the lady out. We're not going to have to say thank you, are we? <laughs> is this real? Oh, yeah, this is genuinely you real. You don't know well, what the bird's been up to. Sorry, not the bird. That's... <laughs> I, think I can taste garlic and wicked in my <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Honestly, I've, I, I, I get, I've had four kids. It's too much. You don't like it? You, you, you have some you, at home, you, though, You prefer you? yours fresh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that Jonathan and Jamie were right, uh, uh, as were uh, Eddie and David, about the... This is breast milk. It's it's the the anyway, David and Eddie have four points. Uh, David and Miranda have no points. Jonathan and Jamie have four points. We're going to take a short break and enjoy our delicious ice cream made from breast milk. Uh, see you after the break. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the big fat quiz of the year. A quiz so big and fat, not even Andy Gray would smash it. <laughs> As the autocorrect text message of March becomes the he penis fart go cartography, here's what happened. <laughs> Midsummer Murders producer Brian Trumay was suspended after defending his all white casting policy. Brian Trumay said he wanted to represent rural England as accurately as possible. And what better way to do that than by acting like a massive racist? <laughs> Barack Obama produced his birth certificate to prove where he was born, although he forgot to bring a utility bill, so he still can't rent films from blockbusters. <laughs> Wayne Rooney was in trouble after swearing into a camera during a football match. Rooney was seen asking, fucking what? <laughs> to be fair to Rooney, he was just randomly shouting two of his five words. <laughs> it happened to be fucking and what? It could easily have been kick, wee wee or banana. <laughs> Good joke. I like that. For our first question, it's over to Welsh acting supremo Michael Sheen. Hello, Jimmy. Michael Sheen here. Uh, my brother, Charlie Sheen, had a fantastic year. Uh, in fact, he was winning. He won all year long. He discussed this in many interviews. But can you name one physical attribute? that he claimed separated him from other mere mortals. OK. So the question is... What separates Charlie Sheen? You, now, I think the question was, no. can you name um, one attribute that separates Charlie Sheen from us mere mortals, right? Yes. So I could correctly answer no and get the point. <laughs> well, well, you're applauding someone being very weaselly. Yes you, yes, you could, but it's not in the spirit of this game. All right. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Our next question. What was broken by 75,000 Twitter users, the Scottish Sunday Herald and John Hemming MP? John Hemming's MP? Who's yes. John Hemming's MP? It's John Hemming. He, he's an MP, is he? <laughs> he's his own MP. He's his own MP. <laughs> <laughs> That's in some way masturbatory. <laughs> 
the that's weirdest use yeah. of that word I've ever heard. Yeah, I know. Is that the way you sounds like a room, doesn't yeah. it? The masturbatory. <laughs> we will take tea in the masturbatory. <laughs> but it sounds like a conservatory. That would be the worst thing to do in a conservatory. No, I said I masturbatory. I'm no, imagining no. a room that's like a conservatory, but is designed for wanking. <laughs> I think a room for wanking is called the Masturbatorium. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's what the Romans called it. Oh, I see. The original, <laughs> the original. They were wonderful oh. wankers. Oh. <laughs> now, it wouldn't be the Big Fat Quiz without a special report from Channel 4 News King, Jon Snow. He's reporting on one of the biggest songs of the year. Can you tell me what the song is? American police are investigating a bizarre incident on the highway in which an underage girl was apparently found kicking in the front seat of a speeding vehicle. When stopped by police, the 13-year-old was incoherent and struggled to remember what day it was, saying yesterday was Thursday, tomorrow is Saturday, and <laughs> Sunday comes afterwards. She was also heard to shout, got to have my bowl, got to have cereal, prompting fears that some form of substance abuse was involved. <laughs> After being released without charge, the defendant was visibly pleased, stating, we, 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 so excited. We, so excited. Jimmy. John. <laughs> John Snow's a legend. Legend. Okay, so what song was he talking about? It's a song. Yeah, it's a song, yeah. Internet sensation this year. Huge song. Okay, so next question. Why did time stand still in central London on March 15th this year? Oh, yeah, oh, sorry, I can't say it. <laughs> He's getting the hang of this. I'm very into the quiz now. I'm oh, yeah. relaxing and enjoying watching the master no, work. I'm really, really enjoying it. It's a pub quiz. What's not to like? Really OK, all right. So, on with some answers. You ready? You all got something? We're all good. We just need, uh, like, ten minutes. <laughs> 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 need like ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the back of the bus over there. OK. <laughs> all right, right, I've got some answers for you. All right. Michael Sheen asked you which attributes Charlie Sheen claimed to have any thoughts on what physical attributes oh. he claimed to have? Uh, David, Eddie, what did you say? <laughs> he says, and I'm not sure. Well, he said he he can take an infinite amount of drugs. <laughs> okay, not wow. not. Um, that's, that's not quite I a point because I it's... would say at this point I don't I don't consider this answer to be correct. No, this is our well, first. Just as well. It's this a is guess. Our first, our first try. Your first stab. Okay, well, what did yeah. you go for, David and Miranda? And we said he can make a hamburger shape out of his willy. Ooh! <laughs> because if you you know, like when I was playing with yours and I sort of folded it. <laughs> And then yeah. we pretended it was a hamburger, and yes. I just... Oh, mm, 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 mm. I don't recall... <laughs> Maybe I... it was a dream. My, my daughter, David's her favourite author, and now I've got a show of that cos she wants to see me on TV. <laughs> Is it scene? inconsistent no, with writing children's books? <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, you can do that. You can make all kinds of amazing shapes. I mean, it's hard with yours cos it's tiny, but... <laughs> A normal size one, you can make lots of things, hamburgers, etc. Cocktail burger. <laughs> now, are we talking about well, ways well. you can mutilate your penis? <laughs> <laughs> it's not penis mutilation, it seems to be penis manipulation. Yes, yes. it's, penis. Right. it's yeah. puppetry it's of the penis. Puppetry. Yeah. Yeah. Puppetry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Shane. Yeah. Uh, right. Jonathan, so Jamie, get us back on this. Fun. What, what yeah. did you say? I remember him saying he could drink tiger blood. Yep, that's correct. And he had uh, a super rock star a, a DNA, I think he had. Uh, let's go back to Michael for the answer. Hello again. Well, there are many things that make my brother Charlie so special. <laughs> including, but not limited to, tiger blood, Adonis DNA, and a brain from an extraterrestrial realm. <laughs> well, I think you've got to get a point for tiger blood. Thank you very much. How can you have tiger blood? He's not a tiger. What? I, what he's... If by definition, he's yes, got Charlie lie. Sheen blood. Got... <laughs> it's not a debate. It is a debate. Can we treat ourselves to a little bit of Charlie in action? Some are saying that you're bipolar. I'm bi-winning. <laughs> I win here and I win there. Now what? I am on a drug. It's called Charlie Sheen. Um, <laughs> you borrow my brain for five seconds and just be like, dude, can't handle it. Unplug this bastard. Yeah, because it just it fires in a way that is, um, I don't know, maybe not from this particular uh, terrestrial uh, realm. <laughs> you know? And you've got tiger blood and Adonis DNA, man. It's like, get, get with the program, dude. <laughs> Ooh. Whoa. Christmas future looks pretty fun. <laughs> so you get a point for that, uh, Jonathan and Jamie. Thank you. No one else does. OK. I get nothing. Down. I asked you what was broken by 75,000 Twitter users. What did you think? My heart. Oh. She went speed dating and 17,000 men turned her down. <laughs> and an MP. 
and the, the Sunday Herald. And the Sunday Herald also. And Lembit Opic. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad day when yeah. Lembit Opic turns you down, isn't it? Bloody hell. There's nowhere else to go when Lembit turns you down. <laughs> Very hard. So, hey, Jonathan, Jamie, what have you got? Yeah, it's a toilet in um, the Glasgow Starbucks. They broke it. Not even vaguely. Oh. David <laughs> uh, Super injunction. Correct. The answer was, of course, Ryan Giggs, super injunction against Imogen Thomas. Of course. <laughs> Jon Snow reported on one of the biggest songs of the year, but which one? Initially, I thought the Downton Abbey theme. And then we went with Friday, Friday. <laughs> your, your kids like it. I bet your kids liked it. <laughs> no, no, they preferred that other one, which was Wave your hair all around. Wave your hair all around. Wave your hair all around. I think it's back and forth. Wave your hair No, it's back and forth. Back and forth. Wave your hair around. Wave your hair back and forth. What happened to music? <laughs> <laughs> David and Eddie, you went for Friday as well. OK, David and Miranda, your answer. We weren't we listening. We weren't listening. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. Well, during that question, you just weren't Well, listening. we were trying to listen, but then we were talking about old times. <laughs> and uh, we didn't get it. I'm sorry, I apologise, cos I know up to now we've had all right answers, but... <laughs> but I thought that was lovely, what they just sung. Oh, well, let's have a listen to how it should have sounded. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Everybody oh, wow. looking forward to the week. What's not to like? Catch it. <laughs> okay, so David and Eddie got that right, Jonathan and Jamie got that right. Uh, no points for David and Miranda. So, why did time stand still in central London? Uh, Jamie thought it was the there's an Olympic countdown clock mm -hmm. that stopped. He put that. Olympic clock stopped. Well, it is the Olympic countdown clock stopped. David and Miranda, you went with? Richard Keyes and Andy, Andy Gray, Gray. Because, <laughs> because we didn't write it down in the previous round. Points. So we feel we could get a point now, now. for the question from the previous <laughs> round. We did what we did there. A, it is in a... what quiz does that work? <laughs> oh, the answer to that question. But I've got an answer from earlier. We maybe. know. <laughs> you've got, you've got both names. That is actually just the premise of a two Ronnie sketch, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand much about the Olympics. So they're gonna, it's the game countdown. So the Olympics will start with do 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 boom, like that. And then the 100 metres, bang, they're off. Because I'm quite excited. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Instead of a gun, you just go... Are you going? Are you going to the Olympics? Yeah, I'm going to go to a few. I'm things, going so. as well. I'm absolutely going. You've got, what have you got tickets for? You're not swimming, are you? No, I've been asked to be an ambassador for the swimming team. Wow. Really? Wow. 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 And I'm going to see um, Tom Daly diving. So am I. It's slightly it's... creepy, isn't it, just to ask to see him? <laughs> Yes, it is, David. I'd like to see Tom Daly in oh. Speedos, please. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think, because I couldn't think of anything else to, you know, go to. No, I couldn't think of another sport. <laughs> <laughs> what you could think of was a boy in tight trunks. <laughs> <laughs> you know so, I'm going to see Tom Daly, and then afterwards, I'm because I'm ambassador, I can hang around in the uh, change rooms and the showers. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's not well. what ambassadors That's do. Really <laughs> <laughs> Is your wife going to come with you when you're doing this? Is that? I'd rather she didn't. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, when you refer to David's wife, we normally do inverted commas around the word wife. <laughs> well, I just sort of mentioned. Are you excited I'm, about the Olympics? I think excited? the Olympics is brilliant. Now, remember this: it will not be back in our lifetime. This is the greatest show on earth, and it will not return. The last one was 64 years ago. Next one will be probably 80 years time. If you're 10, you'll be 90. This is it, baby, and it's going to be beautiful. Are you looking I mean, it will it? happen mm. every four years in other countries. Yeah, yeah but you've got to go there. You have to yeah. go there. No, David, no, obviously. you don't. This is what I found out. It's on television. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it's on television constantly. <laughs> <laughs> to a wearying extent. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of planning is going on for the 2012 Olympics. Sadly, most of the planning is being done by Al Qaeda. But... <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for a special round all about the feel good story of 2011 the royal wedding. Oh, yeah. oh. The royal wedding brought oh. the country together. We united as a nation and said as one, like he's married the wrong sister. <laughs> <laughs> Let's remind ourselves what happened. It's showing the world what we do best, and it's fantastic. Really elegant. Yes, very elegant. We are gathered here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony.
it's that thing that they said in there, it kind of shows what Britain does really well, that pomp and ceremony and the whole thing. No one else would, you know, turn on something like that, I don't think. We I can't mean, have that as our main thing. You know, we can't just, like, just posh people getting married, we're oh, brilliant at that, and that's it. You but, know, we are, just worry about it. but we are bloody good I think at it. We've got to mix it up. A royal wedding one year and Olympics the next. Yeah, and Amy's <laughs> right, we had Jordan's wedding the year before. That was equally beautiful. <laughs> or, was it, or was it the year before that? It was well, a... there's one every year, I think. Isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Apart from a leap year. Oh, the leap year, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so for our first wedding question, it's over to X Factor judge and end dub, Talisa. Hey, Jimmy. At the Royal Wedding this year, one of the guests, Grace Van Cutsum, became an internet star, but can your lovely teams tell me why? Yeah, I think I know. Is did it... anyone get an invite? Jamie, did you not get an invite to the wedding? You, you struck me as No, I was a bit upset, really. But <laughs> we had a nice party. Did you, did you all get together and watch yeah, it? Yeah, I wrote a recipe and dedicated it to them. What Kate, was? Kate and Will's pie. What's in Kate and Will's pie? Beautiful, it was. Beef shin, barley, beer, onions, cooked slow, fall off the bone. Not a, a very romantic thing. dish, though, is it? A big uh, no, no. shin pie. No, <laughs> it, because when you cook that pie for someone, it makes them propose to you. It's a very romantic is pie. It, what about the, the lovely oh, music of Domino's on speed dial? <laughs> 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 have, you, have you got them on your? Have you got the iPhone app for the pizza delivery? I, I don't actually. <laughs> yeah, and I sometimes I do it with my mistakes, so I, I'll eat it anyway if it cuts. Yeah. But I mean, I don't. <laughs> know. Yeah, they track you all over London and shove the pizza down. <laughs> <your throat> I would like to live a lifestyle where the whole time I've got a garlic bread vaguely following me around. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we've we got answers for this. What have you got, Jonathan, Jamie? I think the answer's in her name, if I remember correctly. Grace Van Cutson. Cutson. Van. She's a child who drives a van. <laughs> <laughs> OK. David, Eddie, what have you got for this? They covered... Uh, did she, is she the one that covered her ears when they kissed? David, Miranda, what have you put? I did not write this. No, because I was trying to listen, but she very got a very ample bosom. <laughs> Lisa, I was really... Honestly, I was just staring at her tits and I totally forgot to answer. I was looking at him, looking at them. They are nice. Can we have a look and see why she made the headlines? Okay. Oh, that's so it. there she is. Oh. It does imply oh. that the, the sound of the snogging was that loud. <laughs> which <laughs> which is... Unbelievable. She was actually listening to some rave music in the <laughs> earphone. <laughs> OK, so David and Eddie get a point for that. No one else gets a point. OK, next question. How did verger Ben Sherwood celebrate the successful union of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge? Did he shave himself? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got an answer, Miranda? Yeah, you... and this is... This is, this is, this is it, our this first is it. official point. <laughs> <laughs> OK, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you might want to just uh, steal yourselves for this. It's uh, David and Miranda's first point here. Thank Pretty you. exciting yeah. stuff. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so let's go straight to... I asked you, how did Verger Ben Sherwood celebrate the successful union of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge? Okay. He watched Babe Station all night. <laughs> how, 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 disprove that! <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, uh, David and Eddie, I'm, I'm guessing... <laughs> well, we thought that maybe... He cooked his own spleen. Now, we're not sure... <laughs> but we... <laughs> what the recipe was. Jonathan and Jamie, you are our only hope. Okay. He did a handstand. He was the guy who did the handstand down well, the red carpet. Let's he did have a, great a look job and see. Back at the army, the clergy were literally doing cartwheels. The verger, <laughs> Ben Sherard, doing what so many have imagined, but never dared before. <laughs> So, let's see what's going on with the scores. Uh, Jonathan and Jamie have eight. David and Miranda still have no points. Oh, David and Eddie have eight. <laughs> Another break now, but don't go away. There's still well over an hour of Big Fat Quiz to come, or as I like to think of it, enough time for me to make one of Jamie's 30-minute meals. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back, and as the big fat gypsy of May is crammed into the monstrous flashing wedding dress of June, let's have a look at what made the headlines. Hugh Hefner was jilted at the altar. He said there were no hard feelings. <laughs> Two men were charged with the attempted abduction of Joss Stone. Good thing they were caught. If you kidnapped Joss Stone, you'd probably end up cutting off your own ears. <laughs> Who can forget the extraordinary AV referendum? <laughs> Turns out everyone. Ready for more questions? Of course you are. OK. First up, it's back to the kids of Mitchellbrook Primary School. Yay, for another one of their special school yeah. plays. What are they acting out here? Your Saturday night starts here. Yay! Yeah! La, 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 la. We're singing a song. La, la, la. We're singing a song. <laughs> we are the best at singing. You are fantastic. Come with me. <gasps> Yeah. <laughs> 
each one. I can't understand her. This will never work. <laughs> Sorry, you have to go home now. You're not my friend anymore. <laughs> Again, uh, uh, an acting masterclass from Mitchell Brook Primary School there. OK, so what story were they acting out? When a Twitter user took to his keyboard at 1am on May the 1st to complain about the racket outside his flat, which major international event was he inadvertently live-tweeting? Oh, May. Oh, uh... First of May, one in the morning, he's complaining about the noise outside his flat and he was live-tweeting something. Miranda, David, stop giggling. You haven't no, even got a point yet. He's got the right answer. Well, have you really? Because I've heard this before. OK. All right. For our next question, it's over to none other than Lee Evans. Lee Evans, everyone. Hi, Jimmy. Um, in June, Burmese pro-democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi claimed that one thing had been a lifeline during her imprisonment. Can you remember what it was? <laughs> oh, I love him. Love him. OK. Do you got something for that? Yeah. Miranda, David? Yes. Oh, yes, yes Jimmy! <laughs> you keep on saying yes, you've got it right, and then you've got nothing, and you've really got to make an effort. We're trying! Yeah, we've got so much effort putting yeah. this quiz together, and you're ruining it. <laughs> We're really trying! <laughs> <laughs> OK. Both the Queen and Barack Obama made historic visits to Ireland this summer. But what did Barack do that the Queen refused to? And finally, take a look at this clip and tell me what this old man is apologising for. If, 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 if people want me to apologise, I can apologise, yes. I did not have the, the, all of that worked out as, as accurately as, it, as I should have, or I wish I could have had it. Uh, that doesn't bother me at all. So what was he apologising for? It's old, the clip. Mm. Was it an old clip? Was it an it's, old clip? It happened this year. year. It's all this year. Well, the big fat quiz it? of the year. Thank Very much really. the clue is in the title. <laughs> <laughs> OK. You ready for some answers? Right, let's, uh, let's get some answers. OK, so uh, you saw the kids at Mitchell Brook Primary School. What were they acting out? Uh, uh, Cheryl Cole, out of X Factor. OK, and what, what have you gone for, Jonathan, Jamie? Exactly the same. Well, you said poor Cheser gets fired from X Factor yeah. because they couldn't understand her accent over there, apparently. Well, hang on a second. You're a big star in, in the States, aren't you, Jamie? They didn't really understand me, but I had to do certain things to certain people to get the job. You speak like... What? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> it, it sort of comes back to my impediment, really. Gets He's gifted it's... with a very large tongue. Let's not say anything more. <laughs> But I phoned Cheryl Cole after she was... Because uh, they just they said they couldn't understand her accent, and I phoned her to try and commiserate. Couldn't understand a fucking word she was saying. <laughs> <laughs> David, Miranda... You thought they were acting out? The Phantom Here <laughs> yeah. inside my mind. <laughs> from the Phantom of the Opera as well as The Lion King. It's yeah. strange. Have you, have you I, I basically have went down. Sunk? Yeah, I yeah. sank. Can you come up again? I don't know how to. Pump it. <laughs> pump it, then go down. Eddie, pump me. No, pump, why don't we pump him up again? Up, a little bit. Do you want me to help, uh, Jonathan? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah you're, up again. Again. you're up again. Oh, I didn't. That's better. Oh, I had my hand on the wrong knob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Did you get it? Did you get it? <laughs> 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 OK, so uh, Cheryl Cole getting fired from the X Factor in America, you got that absolutely right. OK, second one, I asked you which major international event was inadvertently live-tweeted at 1am on the 1st of May. Did you get this? Yes. OK. What, do, what, did, you, what did you go? Um, the assassination of Noel Edmonds. <laughs> because they found that he was in this compound uh, where he'd been hiding for many, many years. And uh, the US Marines um, came in. <laughs> And um, they knew it was him because he had a very, very tiny beard. <laughs> and, um, and Barack Obama was watching and he, he said, shoot him. Um, <laughs> and Noel Edmonds, luck, you know, fortunately, Didn't we now live, live in a much better world because Noel Edmonds is dead. <laughs> is that right? You are so close. I know. You've got all it the was detail right there. The beard, it was wasn't tiny... it? It was someone with a beard. It was definitely someone with a beard. Uh, Jamie. Yeah, I thought it was the assassination of Bin Laden. He got it straight away. I think he's right. In, in that little bungalow. <laughs> looked a little bit like where my nan lived. Okay, uh, David and Eddie, what did you go for? Cooked his own spleen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a common answer. Right, yeah, yeah. So Jonathan and Jamie get the points there because I'm Bin Laden was. <laughs> I've just. Ja Jamie bin says I should give this guy. I've come yeah. up with a joke and I want you to be kind, okay? Come on, do the joke. Because I'm not sure if it's good. This is a good one. Okay. He likes it. Okay, go on. 
Do you know where you were when they killed Osama? No, that's wrong. Um, <laughs> when they told me that Bin had been killed, I said, Wheelie? <laughs> There's nothing the matter with that. He said, do it. I'll do, I'll do, I'll do one back. Osama Bin Laden, jihadic coming. <laughs> I know what you did last Osama. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Evans asked you, who inspired Burmese campaigner Aung San Suu Kyi during her time in prison? What did you put? Okay. Richard Keyes and Andy Gray. Again, again, oh. it's not the answer to this question. <laughs> but if we go back a few months, Two it's, it's the correct answer. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, so you've gone for David and Eddie. Uh, Dave Lee Travis's World Service uh, music show. So you think that it's a hairy cornflake? Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. And you've gone for Jonathan Jamie? Yeah, I think the radio show so. saved her life. Let's go back to Lee to find out. Unbelievably, it was the hairy cornflake himself, Dave Lee Travis. Amazing. <laughs> OK. Um, next up, I asked you what Obama did in Ireland that the Queen didn't. What did you put? Buy Miranda on DVD. <laughs> because she refuses to watch it. Because, to her, it's quite rude. David and Eddie, <laughs> what, what have you got for this? We said that the Queen drank a pint of Guinness that uh, Barack Obama refused to, <laughs> except it's the other way round. <laughs> oh, you saved that at the last minute. OK. Uh, Jonathan and Jamie, what did you think that uh, Obama did that the Queen refused to? Jedward. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Obama did Jedward? No. <laughs> Obama met Jedward. Jedward. And then I don't think the Queen would understand Jedward. No. Oh. They're banging and now. I think she would think she was drunk. She was <laughs> yeah, Jedward. yeah. But Obama, he'd get Jedward, he'd be down with Jedward, he'd love Jedward. He'd probably well, take Jedward well, I, can, I can tell you that David and Eddie are absolutely right. That's the great dancer. We, we've Oof. even got a still of Obama enjoying a pint of Guinness. There's, there, there he is. And we've, got, and we've got a picture of the Queen being offered Guinness and turning it down. <laughs> it's one of those birds that sort of goes into it like that. And that... <laughs> 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 OK. And finally, in this round, uh, what was the old man apologising for? What, what did you go for, uh, David and Eddie? Uh, the rapture, the end of the world rapture thing, which he missed, and then they re-postponed it until about October, from May to October. <laughs> OK, and, and what did you go for? Well, uh, Jamie said end of the world thing, and I said the rapture, and then he wrote it with a W, so I made him correct it. <laughs> I was not too embarrassed. So we, we spelt... <laughs> well, D David and Miranda, you probably nailed this. You probably got it absolutely right. Apologising for writing Jimmy Carr's jokes. <laughs> Okay, now, well, I can tell you that that was preacher Harold Camping apologising after the rapture or Armageddon failed to happen on the 21st oh, of May. What an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you think that would be something you wouldn't have to apologise for, the idiot. fact that the world didn't end? You think, yeah, cheer up, mate, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> OK, now it's time for a special bonus round about <laughs> movies. I'm going to show you pictures from three of the biggest movies of the year. They've all been subtly improved. Can you tell me what the films are? Here's your first one. The name of the film, yeah? The name of the film. Okay, so that's the first one. Here is the second one. Oh. There I am. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. That was a long weekend, wasn't it, Jimmy? <laughs> and the third one. <laughs> I don't see why you're laughing at that. <laughs> okay, so you've got to name all three movies, all came out this year. Okay. Okay, answers. What have, what have you gone for? Hangover Tin Tin Black Swan. Oh, Hangover 2, Tintin, Black Swan. You've nailed that, I think. Yeah. It is fair to say. Uh, Jonathan, Jamie, you've gone with... We've got Hangover 2 and Tintin, and we couldn't remember Black Swan, and we thought you looked a bit like Boy, Boy George, George in that picture. Because <laughs> you do look a lot like him. <laughs> what have you gone for, David and Miranda? Carry, carry on, on camping. camping. Carry <laughs> on screaming. <laughs> and carry, carry on, on bumming. bumming. Which is, <laughs> is the new one, that because they've, it's not really entendres anymore, they've no. just kind of just, just going straight it. for... <laughs> saying it how it so is. That's one of the new ones that they've done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, look, it's the, the first one was the, uh, yes, we were right, the Hangover 2. There you go. Tintin. The second one was uh, Tintin. I think yes. I look better as Tintin than he does. <laughs> and then the third one was, of course, Black Swan. See, that makeup, you should try that. You should try yeah. that makeup. Because you actually look quite nice then. You know what? Black With that makeup on, thing. Jimmy, you could be in my transsexual summer next year. <laughs> they're doing transsexual summer. They do it. They, uh, there's always transsexual summers going on, but it's a TV show now. It's a bit like Grand Design. They're always either building an erection or knocking through downstairs to make more room. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check in on the scores. Uh, David and Eddie have got 15 points. Uh, David and Miranda are still on yeah. nil point. Jonathan and Jamie have 14 points. <laughs> so you're in the lead, David and Eddie.
And as David Cameron likes to say in times of national crisis, time for a short break. See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz. As we move into British summertime, it can only mean one thing. It's time to pop on your balaclava and nip to your local JD Sports. <laughs> in August, riots broke out in major cities and Wolverhampton. <laughs> in Croydon, windows were smashed. Shops closed their doors, feral youths wandered in violent gangs and some streets became virtual no-go areas. And then the riots began. <laughs> OK, ready for some more Big Fat Questions? Yes! Yeah. Let's do it! Woohoo! Woo! <laughs> in July, the phone hacking scandal resulted in the closure of the news of the world. But what was the final newspaper headline? <laughs> okay. You all got something for that? The final headline for the news of the world. Let's look at that. Okay. How did a bag of Tesco value basmati rice propel one Londoner to global fame? What the fucking hell does that say? <laughs> I can't help it if my... It's not pretty handwriting. This, this handwriting is unbelievable. <laughs> I've got a very special treat for you. You ready for this? Yes. It's a special treat, OK? For your next question, it's over to the legendary drummer, Animal. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 Oh! Hi, Jimmy! <laughs> David, hey! Boxer. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Those big fight, yeah. Oh, <laughs> what is excuse? <laughs> okay, so what was uh, what was his excuse for losing the fight? Okay. Yeah. Okay. In which unlikely location would you have been able to find a spinning teacup ride, a solid gold dessert trolley, and an album full of photos of Condoleezza Rice? David and Miranda, I can I can only dream. <laughs> Jamie and Jonathan, who knows? Yeah, we're, we're there. Mate. Okay, you there. Good, got it. Okay. They're all over that. It's time now for a say what you see puzzle. Have a look at these series of pictures. It spells out a news event like this. Shh, don't say out loud. <laughs> We've got it. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Eddie, you got it. Uh, yeah, you got everything? Done. All done, okay. We haven't done it yet, hold it. We Jamie, did. Jonathan, come on. He's writing a recipe. <laughs> <laughs> I need to say something. Toast you need to say something. <laughs> David Williams has just done the smelliest part. This is what Christmas is all about. <laughs> it's actually me. <laughs> <laughs> My chair suddenly and it just slipped out. Actually, <laughs> it's made you feel it's sick enough to move. move. It, you know when a smell sort of gets right into your throat. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is his anal muscles are shot to hell. He can't. He <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds like this. He just sounds like. <sighs> <laughs> I can sort of tell how hot it was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's kind of pretty much gone now. Okay, all right. Okay, well, Miranda, stay there for safety for now. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> did anyone remember the uh, the news of the world's final headline? Yes. Yes. Okay. What what have you got, John? We've still got your numbers. That's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> remember it very clearly. That's what they said. It was a threat. Now, did they hack anyone's phone here, Miranda? All they get is uh, number seven. A number 41. <laughs> <laughs> and extra spring rolls. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what, so people were leaving messages with Chinese people <laughs> on your phone? Yeah. No one rings me. I don't me. understand. <laughs> you were posing as a Chinese takeaway. <laughs> yeah, you're also getting calls saying, well, where's all the fucking food? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the joke <laughs> backfired. <laughs> Okay. Well, he's he's putting it properly. through the logic machine. There's he's nothing done, you can he's do. He's done this Mitchell logic thing. The joy thing. destroying logic machine. <laughs> Happy Christmas, Britain. <laughs> okay, David, what did you put? We're sorry for being dirty shitters. <laughs> You're the <What>? dirty shitter. <laughs> <laughs> It's gone. It, seriously. Okay. Oh, oh, right. yeah, I've got an upset tummy. You've got an upset tummy? You've upset Miranda's now. OK. <laughs> David and Eddie, you went for... We've cooked... We've cooked our spleen. <laughs> 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 I 
using it the spleen metaphorically. Yeah. They didn't mean it li literally. They were just saying, that's it for us. We've cooked our spleen. We've cooked our spleen, as they say. <laughs> no one says yes, that. Yes, that's a well-known well -known expression for a newspaper closing. <laughs> well, that's it. Should we have a look at the final headline for the News of the World? Let's have a look. It was... It was... Oh, yeah. Uh, Thank you and goodbye. OK, I asked you how a bag of value rice brought global notoriety to one Londoner. What did you put? Oh, oh Miranda has the answer. Richard Keyes and Andy Gray. It's going to keep on coming. <laughs> well, until you get a point on that, you're going to keep on so, putting yeah, it. Because I got it right. So what did you put, uh, Jamie? We think the bag of rice contained one of Willy Wonka's golden <laughs> tickets. <laughs> <laughs> that he got to visit Willy Wonka's... Rice factor, <laughs> which wasn't really as exciting for a child <laughs> as the earlier events in the chocolate factory. It was just a large room in which a notice explains that rice is an agricultural crop yeah. and isn't manufactured. There are several rooms. There's a pillow room and there's a boiled room and there's an egg fried room. Right. And that's it. I wish I had an egg fried room. There's a risotto room. I'd spend all day in the egg fried room. I think David Williams has quite recently. <laughs> 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 OK, uh, David and Eddie, you, you, you've got this. What have you put? Well, we don't know the answer, so we guessed. I was wondering, what, what, did he fight rioters to stop them stealing it? That is almost the opposite of what happened. Uh, what basically happened was he looted a bag of value rice <laughs> and then posted a photo on the internet, proudly holding it. <laughs> have you ever stolen anything, Eddie Izzard? Yeah, I stole makeup when I was 15. Wow. And I got caught. Hang on. Let's, let's come to this. You see, go on about being a trans... I never see you in a dress. I know, but it's a brilliant tax dodge. <laughs> I've never worn a dress, so I, you know, I'm new in this area. <laughs> Could I just say, I've never thought that when I came out as being a transvestite, I get hassled by people saying, you're not a transvestite. <laughs> <laughs> you're not dressing up as a woman enough. I, I like exactly. it. Exactly. I want it's more It's completely of it. inverse. We have moved into the third millennium. Surely you're not a transvestite. <laughs> and people bullying me at school, you're not a transvestite. I'm well, not <laughs> a transvestite. <laughs> that's not you. You're not a dress if you're a transvestite. <laughs> OK, that's great that we've got to this place. Thank you. Well, yeah. they, they still haven't caught this fella. He's, well, he's probably eating a lot of rice. He's much bigger now. <laughs> I, like, I like rice. <laughs> I, think, I think it's official. I think we've hit a new low on this show. <laughs> I, I just wanted to put that out there. I like rice. That is I one of that... your best stories. I know. Like, <laughs> if you're on Parkinson, start with that story, <laughs> you know? I was somewhat baffled in the riots. Cos, like, you know when it was all kicking off in Clapham? Yeah. Well, you know, they did the whole street. And the only two shops they didn't do was Waterstones and my cookery school. <laughs> and I just couldn't get my head around it. <laughs> but to be fair, apparently there was a DVD shop near me and they were smashing the window to put his DVD back in. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Animal asked you what excuse boxer David Hay gave for losing his fight. What did you get? Broken toe. Broken that he had sore wrists. <laughs> to his fighting like that. <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't get you know, purchased with a strong wrist. Do th you know that? That. Yeah. You know that that, that we, really we do what we do at home. That's good. <laughs> Fisty cuffs, I think it's called. <laughs> this is a family show. Not anymore. Who's <laughs> 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 that? Who's <that? laughs> family? Okay, uh, David, Eddie, what did you put? Broken big toe. Small toe. Well, let's go back to Animal for the answer. Ha ha ha! Ha 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 ha! He says broken toe. <laughs> Animal can fight him. Boom, 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 boom. Animal can take Jimmy too. Boom, 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 boom. Animal, love it. Slightly surreal moment. Yeah. So you got that, Jonathan and Jamie, and you got that, David and Eddie, and you didn't get that, David and Miranda. There's a pattern emerging here. We're going to break that pattern very soon. <laughs> OK. So in which location, yeah. an unlikely location, we think, would you have been able to find the following items? A spinning teacup ride, a solid gold dessert trolley and an album full of photos of Condoleezza Rice? David and Miranda. Come on, you can get a point here. You've got a point. Jimmy Carr's house. house. <laughs> because you're on the ride, eating your food, Looking at pictures of Condoleezza Rice and touching yourself. It is not it's <laughs> gold. The one in my house you. is gold plated. Ah. It's solid gold. Oh, shit. Okay, well, what did you go for, uh, we, we, were, we wasn't sure if it was your place, Michael Jackson's, or actually we settled on David Williams's masturbatorium. <laughs> were we okay. right or wrong? It's disgusting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Do the net, Eddie. Uh, Colonel Gaddafi's pleasure palace. No, was it? Oh, yes, it was. That no. is the right answer. We're willing, we're willing. We're willing. Okay, time to say what you saw, and here is the picture. Yeah. What did you get? Uh, Jonathan and Jamie, what did we you get? We could not get this uh, at all. We were thinking it's, it's harp, there's a harp, there's a pair. Harp of a... So in the end, we went for some pictures of some balls. <laughs> the Nazis are in. Uh, <laughs> David, Eddie, any, any thoughts on this? We, we got it right. You think you got it right? Well, let's just check in with David and Miranda, because you haven't got any points so far. What do you think this is? Harper Seven, seven Born! born. That is the correct answer, you get a point. That first point. For you. Okay. Point. Yes, you got a point. You made quite a, a point. Quite a fuss. So we won. <laughs> you are not. You're not currently in the lead, but you oh, are. Right. You're well, on the close. board. Close to We're third. <laughs> Closing in. You are third. third place. Close you are not bad. Third not place. bad. <laughs> not bad. Now it's time for Who Am I? The part of the show where I introduce a mystery the guest. Jimmy Carr. <laughs> <laughs> Another point. <laughs> Just, just wait and listen to the whole thing. Oh, the question sorry, is, sorry. Now it's time for Who Am I? Jimmy Carr! <laughs> now it's time for the part of the show that doesn't have a name, but oh. is where I introduce a mystery guest. All you have to do is guess who they are and how they made the news. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our mystery guest. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice now you can ask yes or no questions only, okay? A couple of little questions, and then you have to tell me why this lady made the news. Okay? Uh, I love your hair. I think it looks lovely. Is it something to do with fashion or design or shops or something? No. I can confirm this is not Vivian Westwood. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, um, is what you're involved in on the news? Were you on YouTube? Was it an internet thing? Yes. Well, uh, were you uh, to do with the riots? No. <laughs> Was it on the news? Yes. Do you believe Eddie Izzard is an actual transvestite? <laughs> you, you can answer that. Do you think he's an actual no. transvestite? No. No. <laughs> I'm actually a lesbian. <laughs> Do you like rice? No. What? <laughs> Have you bought Jimmy Carr's new DVD? No. No. <laughs> were the colour of the jacket you're wearing, was that the same colour you were wearing in the thing that appeared on the internet? Yes. That... Thank you. And can I say oh. what a lovely sort of jacket it is? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you become famous uh, doing something good? Yes. <laughs> I think David Williams has just had one of his moments. I.e., um, a what, uh, well, don't answer. You've did, got to write it down you... if you think you know. Oh, oh if you think David! You know. <laughs> okay, so we've got three answers. So, who do you want to go to first? Who do you think? Who do you think will know? I think three. the middle couple. The middle, okay. So we all gave it We don't have names, but we're the middle couple. <laughs> um, I, I think she stopped a robber. <laughs> Um, with a handbag. OK, and Jonathan and Jamie, what have you gone for? We've got have a go here. We saw... I think you're the lady who, with a handbag, attacked some uh, guys trying to smash into a shop. Or the geezer on the motorbike who looked like me in The Naked Chef. The guy chef. like The Naked Chef who looks yeah. like Jamie widen off and you quite rightly attacked him. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, David, what have you got? We said that she saved his spleen from certain death. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a look at what this lady did and why she made the news. This is incredible. <laughs> Stuff. That is... 
have to hang Tinson there, who foils a robbery. Using, using just, you've got to tell us what happened. Tell us what happened. So you're wandering down the high street, you see some guys going towards the bank. I was talking to a friend, actually, and uh, we heard some revving of engines and a clash. And when I turned round, it looked like one boy was being chased by three others. And they'd got sticks. I knew they'd got sticks. I didn't know they were sledgehammers, but they were sticks to me. <laughs> yeah, you know, sticks, sledgehammers, same, same. Same, same. And I raced up because I thought the one boy was going to get such a beating and I wasn't going to stand there and watch it. Wow. Bless you. Oh, Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. And, and then, and then did, you, did you realise there was a robbery taking place? About three or four yards from the actual point, um, the four boys came round the bend and were smashing the glass of the windows with sledgehammers, but I'd already got there. I just thought, oops, and I just went straight in. <laughs> yeah, we need more people like this. This is amazing. Mm. But did they... What, what happened in the end? What's the ending? Did they catch them? Yes. Can I ask you? What on earth do you carry in your hand? Yeah. <laughs> Just one thing. That guy went flying. Rice, I reckon. Is it rice? <laughs> Not quite. You're a good woman. We love you. You're amazing. That's oh, great. It's yeah. properly amazing. Thank I, you. You, I mean, I'm not quibbling or anything, but where were you during the August riots? Because <laughs> no, no one's having a go, but you should really have been in Croydon keeping an eye yeah. out. Because it all kicked off. We needed about an army of you. <laughs> Let's just check in on the, on the scores at the end of that. David and Eddie have 18 points. Uh, Jonathan and Jamie are trailing with 16. 16. David and Miranda have two points. Woo! We're going to take a short break now, but let's hear it one more time for Supergrand and Timpson. Yeah! And Timpson, everyone. Yeah! Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz, and as a special treat, we've got a bonus round all about this year's television. Downton Abbey went from strength to strength. Despite its setting, Downton Abbey deals with the issues that are still relevant today. There's not a day goes by that I don't worry about whether it's OK to hit a servant with an open hand. <laughs> the show won two BAFTAs, five Emmys, and Maggie Smith won the cover to Jimmy Carr, You Know What, I Still Would Award. <laughs> You're just saying, handsome woman. OK. <laughs> 2011 was the year of the scripted reality show, with Made in Chelsea, The Only Way is Essex, Geordie Shaw and Desperate Scouse Wives all pulling in big audiences. I like to shorten The Only Way is Essex by switching it off halfway through. <laughs> Made in Chelsea was a brilliant idea for a show. It was ruined for me, though, by one small detail. Everyone in it and everything they did and said. <laughs> Let's have a look at some of this year's TV highlights. On your marks, get set. Break! <laughs> Pie. Where did it come from? There's no makeup on me at all. Really? No, that's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm back. I'm wearing the gold. I'm standing at the North Pole, the very top of the Earth. <laughs> OK, you saw a clip from the Great British Bake Off there, but what distracting natural phenomenon shocked viewers during the final? In, in the Great British Bake Off? In the, in the final of the Great British Bake Off. It's a natural phenomenon. It's if not, you saw it, I think you would the, remember. It's not going to be the workings of yeast, is it? They'd be expecting that. <laughs> they were fully expecting the workings yeah. of the yeast. It was an extraordinary <laughs> thing. <laughs> OK. Here's a special treat for you. Mouseland's hardest-working detective has taken a break from living up with the easy crew to ask us a question. It's over to Rasta Mouse. <laughs> Greetings, Jimmy. Rasta Mouse here. Me and the easy crew love a good tune. So we know there's a lot of people out there that's going to be proper excited to hear that Steps is reforming. <laughs> but can the panel tell me the names of all five of the brethren and the sistren in the band? So, can you name the five brethren and sister in, in step? We weren't really listening. We were just Crazy. surprised to see Rastamouse on the show. I like Rastamouse. What was Rastamouse's question? His question was, can you name all the members of steps? Yeah. Can you? 
Of course you can. <laughs> Finally, a question David Williams knows. Just look at your tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited about them reforming. Really? Tragedy. Tragedy. I've met all of Step. How did you meet all of Step? That was the actual routine. Just ask another question. I just did the routine. Where did you meet on the set? Was it in a sauna? No, I met them on the Alan Carr show. I mean, That's it was a like, dream come true. It's like meeting the Beatles, isn't it? <laughs> it's all wrong. A band called Steps, it's wrong. It's... Why don't you like them to be called Steps? Because it's like a painter called Numbers. <laughs> or a band called Notes, you know. Uh, a they're not a ladder. Well, that's what it is. It's like, a, I mean, it's, it's just, like it's a, just wrong. It's like a, an author called Mr Words. Yeah, it's just... It's Wordsworth. Just, it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're going to put it you together... <laughs> you just would agree, you write out, my English teacher at school was called Mr Sentence. <laughs> it's absolutely true. His that parents did not try. Right. His parents did not try. He could have been a judge. He could have been a judge. He could have been a paedophile. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and finally, we've got a question from Jim Carter, better known as Downton Abbey's loyal butler, Carson. Good evening, Mr Carr. <laughs> this year, the Prime Minister appeared on the BBC's The One Show. Now, what ill-mannered question did the host, a Mr Matt Baker, have the temerity to ask the Prime Minister? <laughs> OK, if you saw that, you would remember. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> You know they were going to call it Steps, the one show. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're on Channel One, so, you know, BBC One, so they call it the one show, and they, they tried. Yeah, they that, linked. That, right. I would like yeah. to have been at that ideas meeting. I, get that, I, I bet that was held at 5.30 on a Friday. <laughs> it's also, you need a name for this show. It's a clever double meaning, because it also implies that it's the only show. And basically, that's the only rationale under which anyone would watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you ready? Have you got something down? Jamie, you got something? Yeah, got it all, mate. Right, right. You got, oh, you got it all. Fantastic. A bit of confidence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Miranda, David, yeah, we, got it. we got it now. We got it. Yes. All right. We'll finish. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that. What's going on? bonus points for flirting. But if there were, <laughs> you would get one. 116 <laughs> points <laughs> to us. <laughs> OK, so uh, what were viewers of The Great British Bake Off horrified by? Did she put some wee in the cake to make the yeast rise or something? Oh, some wee in the cake? <laughs> Jamie <laughs> Oliver! <laughs> Why would you think that? Why would your mind go there? Technically, urine. Urine would help a cake taste nice. Pissier. <laughs> it, would, it would react with the, uh, the baking powder and make it give it more Ammonia lift. in. <laughs> if you pee on your feet, it's what special forces do. You pee on your feet and it makes your feet stronger. So if you pee in a cake, It'll make the cake stronger and it right. can do more marathons. Right. <laughs> when you did the marathons, did, were you peeing on your feet? I was. I was peeing on my feet. Wow. Did you seriously pee on your feet? I, I did. Not you... seriously. More casually. <laughs> more... <laughs> I don't think you were ever doing it in an earnest way. I was quite relaxed when I was doing it. Was not so serious. And so were you, were you like the soles of your feet or the... Well, that's the tricky one. You have to bounce off. You do ricochet. <laughs> if you're to... You have to put your feet up. You have to pee. You have to hit the... Bing, bing, no, but bing, you, you just sorry. pee a puddle and then sort of paddle in it. <laughs> Oh, no, I would want it to be piping hot. <laughs> <laughs> OK, David and Eddie, you went for...? A tiny hurricane in the icing. <laughs> <laughs> a hurricane is a natural phenomenon, and that would be shocking on a cake. OK, <laughs> David and Miranda, you're our only hope. Shocking David Williams farted and then knocked over a profiterole. <laughs> <laughs> that, I can tell you that's incorrect. And I can tell you the answer is they were, they were shocked and appalled by the appearance of a squirrel with a giant penis and testicles. <laughs> That was just in the opening titles, they cut to a squirrel. David, where did you get that outfit from? It's brilliant. <laughs> Someone clearly said to him, show us your nuts. And... Oh. <laughs> and the BBC is a public service broadcaster. It can't go around showing the genitals of animals. No, the... <laughs> <laughs> they could have locked that cock off. What are the... <laughs> 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 
supposed to be doing with their genitals? Hiding them in a handbag? It's not or the animal's fault. It's the fault of the BBC That's what a and the liberal like when media it stands up. for not having. How do, they, how do they do the big ones where David David uh, Attenborough goes out there? How do they shoot that stuff without showing any genitalia? <laughs> they put their pants on on tigers and lions. <laughs> and <laughs> they they, pen, they, they spend months putting bras on penguins. <laughs> OK, so Rastamouse asked you... So no-one got that right. So Rastamouse asked you, uh, name all five members of Steps. Hope you all got them. I you know there were five. Oh, we, got four. Four. we got four. We, we got four. We got H, Lisa, Benny and Bjorn. <laughs> David and Eddie, what did you go for? We, got, we knew H, and so then we speculated. <laughs> I, J, K, <laughs> and... <laughs> OK, uh, David and Miranda, this might be your specialist subject. OK, yeah. H, Lee... Lee. Claire, Lisa, Faye, yeah, we did it! <laughs> Loved it. Adorable and correct. Okay, yeah. let's uh, let's go back to Rastamouse. Just see if you got that right. Yo, greetings again. Me can tell you the five members of Steps are Claire, Lee, Lisa, Faye, and of course your favorite Jimmy, H. For a bonus point, for a bonus point, why is he called H? You can't just say this no, for a bonus no. point. For a bonus point, you know it. for a bonus yeah. point, it's because he's hyperactive, so he was given the nickname H, and that's a bonus point question. Uh, <laughs> one point to well, ask. Another bonus point question. What's his real name? <laughs> Ian. For a bonus. Ian. Two Ian. bonus points. Two, bo two bonus points. <laughs> for a bonus point, <laughs> what age was Pitt the younger made Chancellor of the Exchequer? Yeah. <laughs> 23. Yes, 23, you're right. Sorry, <laughs> I've got okay, one point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in fourth place. You're catching up on it. <laughs> well, a couple more history questions, and I think I could beat those yeah. two. <laughs> OK. And finally, Carson, the butler from Downton, asked you, what did Matt Baker ask David Cameron on The One Show? Any thoughts? Do you like rice? <laughs> Good question, by the way. Good question. <laughs> right, right. Very that. rude to ask somebody, isn't it? Do you it's like a bit edgy rice? for the one show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David and Eddie? How, how do you sleep at night? How do you sleep at night? Sleep Jonathan, night? Jamie? Exactly the same. How do you sleep at night? Oh, let's have a look at the clip. Uh, uh, honestly, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. It's really lovely to come on. Wonderful, really wonderful nice. evening. Just very quickly, how on earth do you sleep at night? <gasps> um. <laughs> I don't think Matt Baker has bought a drink since. <laughs> OK, for a bonus point... Oh, stop with your bonus points. For a bonus <laughs> point, what position did Matt Baker get to in Strictly Come Dancing? Third. Third place, bonus point. Bonus point. <laughs> OK, for nine bonus points... <laughs> when's start? my birthday? Uh, 7th February, so I'm on uh, nine bonus points. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be Christmas without some unexpected visitors. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please welcome with our next question, from The Only Way is Essex, it's Lydia, Lauren and Kirk. Hello, Hello. Well, nice to have you on. I can't Thank believe you. our luck. So, we're taking a night off from the Sugar Hut. Yes. Yeah. Well right. done, you. Um, now, I believe you've got a question for us. Have you? Are going to do the question? We have. Yes. You've got a question. Okay. What's the question? So, this year, um, the only way Zest Six went to Marbella. But what simple diet rule did we stick to in order to look well ream on the beach? <laughs> you've got to write it down. I know it. Of course you, you have know to write it. it. Down, what simple it would mean rule. you couldn't enjoy rice. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, write it down. Simple. OK, rule. so let's have the question again because Eddie looks quite confused yeah, as, to, yeah, as yes, to who or maybe. what you are and what the question is. <laughs> They're from The Only Way is Essex. Have you seen the show, Eddie? The Only Way is Essex. It's an Essex and there's only one way. <laughs> <laughs> so which simple diet, diet rule did we. Did we follow in order Easy. to look well ream on the beach? Well ream, which means well -ream. fucking fantastic. Yeah. Well good. <laughs> it does mean fucking fantastic. What are the words? Because you've introduced other words to the to the English language, haven't you? Gel. Well yeah. gel. gel. Well gel means really, really jealous. jealous. Okay. Well gel. Ream and bejazzle. <laughs> bejazzle. Uh, sharp. 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 sharp is not. You can't really claim you invented sharp. <laughs> yeah, I think people were saying. For a different reason. I think a lot of people say it to you as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I I just got. I come from Essex. I don't know what what is bejazzle. Oh, oh that's actually from America, but it's like diamonds down there. Down where? Diamonds in your uh, vagina. Yes. Yeah. Can we just have a look at one of your? Uh, <laughs> You've never had a vagina. No. Girls, you know uh, Jamie's an expert at the male version. He's been paninied. <laughs> 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 it's called a pudding. 
Chateau. So do you just shove diamonds up your vagina? No, no, you, you <laughs> sort of... You, Eddie, no, Eddie. It's not that, like they're not smugglers. smuggling <laughs> diamonds. <laughs> It's basically making the vagina a bit more sparkly, <laughs> a bit more showbiz and fun for people like David, who like vaginas, but also like a bit of glamour. <laughs> Are you yeah. hoping for, like, a spin-off show like, like Jamie? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. You're from Essex, you've got a big TV show. You must have started on The Only Way Essex. <laughs> have you ever been to the Sugar Hut? No, is it good? It's no, good. It I'm going to say that, obviously, but, yeah, oh. it's all right. It's is it banging? Green. Can we come after the show tonight come to the Sugar Hut? Yeah. Cheers! <laughs> just me trying to fit in with you. <laughs> we should go. I'd like yeah, to go. Why don't we go? Can we go, can we go and have a night out? We'll... Come and see some vajazzles. You'll Let's see bring some the ladies. Go down there. Wow, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't need disco balls, would you? Just hang these chicks from the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, put a light on them. They'd just be these, like, vaginal shapes just glittering. <laughs> And like, all these old fellas will turn up and just think they're in heaven. Oh. <laughs> they're in heaven just thinking about it. <laughs> OK, all right, so you've got the question. You've all got something written down yes, for this? Yes, OK, all right, so let's, let's have a look and see what they put. No carbs before, before Mars. Mars. No carbs before Mars. <laughs> you do not have carbs <laughs> before you go to Mars. <laughs> OK, David, David and Miranda went with... ..to have no chips it's with a KFC, KFC bargain bucket. <laughs> <laughs> because it's good, you it's just have the bad. chicken. You just have a deep fried just chicken. Just the proof that it's kind of the same, no carbs. And there's a free Wolves Viennetta with every bargain <laughs> bucket. You can have that, that would really? David and Eddie, what have you gone for? <laughs> Could it be sperm munching? <laughs> Ladies? No, that was not the answer, I'm Well, afraid. it would have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would have been. OK, all right, so what was the correct answer? Uh, they no can't carbs before Mars. Carbs before Mars. So Yay! Okay, well, let's see how the scores are at this stage. So, Jonathan and Jamie have 18 points. Thank you. David and Eddie have 19 points. They're in the lead. David and Miranda have three points. Woo! Uh, okay. Yeah, we're going to take a short break while the girls give me, well, not a vajazzle, obviously, but maybe glitter balls. <laughs> see you then. <laughs> Christmas <in. laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. And as the intercepted voicemail of July and August results in the Select Committee hearings of September and October, let's remind ourselves <laughs> what happened. Bruce Forsyth was finally given a knighthood. It must have been an amazing sight to see a woman too old to pick up a sword, knight a man too old to kneel down. <laughs> Blackberry apologised after a three-day loss of service. In a statement, the head of Blackberry said, we are working day and night to error some text missing. <laughs> The great David Williams swam the Thames and raised £1 million pounds for charity. <laughs> there are some disgusting things floating in the Thames, and for ten days, David Williams was one of them. <laughs> well, you came to see me, which was very nice. I came to see nice. you in Henley for sort of half... I know, it was lovely, and you kind of gave me, like, a massage and everything. <laughs> and Miranda came and visited I too. did, yes. Some people didn't come. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't be fucked. But you were... <laughs> <laughs> well, what did he raise? It was over a million, one, wasn't it? One point two. That's million. amazing, brother. Wow. Right. Properly impressive. <laughs> Properly good thing to do. I mean, it's no, it's no forty-three marathons in fifty-one days, but it's still okay. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's, it's really swimming is really difficult. You're only swimming about three miles an hour, four miles an hour. It's two. Close. Two miles an hour. It's, yeah. It's really tough. It is tough. My things are easy peasy compared to his thing. Well, okay then. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we'll have, we'll have a couple of questions, OK? Yeah. And for our first question, it's over to rock god Lenny Kravitz. Hello, Jimmy. As you know, I'm a huge fan of particle physics. <laughs> but can your teams tell me why Albert Einstein may have been fairly alarmed back in September? Was it because you wouldn't take your sunglasses off? Yeah. <laughs> Lenny Kravitz there, particle yeah, physicist yeah. and guitarist. OK. This year, Rihanna had a run-in with a farmer in Northern Ireland, Alan Graham. What happened? There he is. Rihanna had a run-in with that man. Got it. Got the answer. Have you written it down? Yeah. We've got it. We've done it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And finally, it's back over to Jon Snow in the Channel 4 newsroom for another report on a song of the year. Jon, over to you. An unlikely economist has released new guidelines to help Britain cope during the recession. The London-based expert indicated that she does not need our money, 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 <laughs> and is keen to implement a new fiscal policy that would effectively make the world dance. The report commissioned by Coconut Man and Moonheads claims that during an economic downturn, 
everyone should look to the left, then everyone should look to the right. <laughs> it goes on to conclude that it's not about the cha-ching, cha-ching, and warns that Britain should be less concerned about the bubbling, bubbling. <laughs> Back to you, Jimmy. John Snowder. It's a legend. Well, and what's the question? So the, so the question was, what song was he reporting on? It's one of the songs of the year. Yeah, I, I mean, that song, the, that song that goes like the, what he said, that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one. <laughs> well, have a dart at it. It's the, one of the biggest selling artists this year. I think oh. the third biggest selling artist this year. I think okay. It's working. Okay, uh, David, Miranda, uh, Jamie, Jonathan, are you all ready? Yeah. You got everything? Okay. Uh, let's put you out of your misery with some answers. Uh, Lenny Kravitz asked you why Einstein might have been fairly alarmed back in September. Any thoughts? Then they, they believe at the Hadron Collider that neutrinos, they might have got neutrinos, they've got evidence they travel faster than the speed of light, which if you go with Einstein's, one of his theories, the famous one, <laughs> it's not possible. OK, what, what did you go for, David? And neutrinos Eddie? faster than the speed of light. Neutrinos faster than the speed of light. Oh, well, I imagine Miranda and David have got this right as well. Um, oh, yeah. Einstein found out his moustache had been bejazzled. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to Lenny Kravitz for the answer. It was because scientists believed that they had proved that the speed of light was no longer the fastest thing in the universe. Eat it, Einstein. <laughs> He's slightly flirting with me. He's <laughs> flirting with Einstein. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Lenny Kravitz. There. I've met his cousin. <laughs> I've, I've met Do you, his does he like rice? <laughs> I've met Lenny Kravitz's cousin. That's a true story. Okay. So I don't want to name drop, but I've met his cousin. Yeah. <laughs> I've met his daughter. Have you? A couple of times. Really? Well, I've met his cousin, so fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So why did farmer Alan Graham have beef with Rihanna? Anyone? Uh, she took a top off on his farm. Yes, he is, he is the man in the UK that didn't want to see Rihanna with a top off. <laughs> he found the one man. Uh, David, Miranda, what did you put for this? Um, Rihanna and the farmer made sweet, sweet musical love, love in the field and she farted. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you know, the farmer was like, no thank you, dear. Get out! Get, oh, out. Think, get off my land. Get off my land. <laughs> OK, Jonathan, Jamie, what did you get? He pulled the shoot because it was getting too kinky and there was, like, kissing and, and a bit of titty action, so it... Off. <laughs> off. Get off my land. <laughs> get off my land because she had a top off in the, the field. Jim, the Jamie he was... not only told you, he kind of acted part of it out as well. Yeah. No, no, no. For a moment, the... I thought I was sitting next to the farmer. I thought I, thought I was on Jimmy's <laughs> farm all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. Well, there, yeah. there she is, and I believe, I believe that top came off during the video shoot. Fantastic. And he, he wasn't happy about but that. But also, what was he doing? The people who own where Downton Abbey is filmed weren't coming in the whole time saying, look, no. come on, none of this makes sense. <laughs> How come it's two years what? later, but they don't seem to have had a conversation? I agree. Why isn't anyone getting any older? <laughs> <laughs> I think what they've all missed is how did he know what she was doing? Well, he was angry because she, even though she was in the middle of the field naked, he could see it really clearly with a his telescope. giant telescope yeah. <laughs> in his masturbatorium. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jonathan and Jamie got that, and David and Eddie got that. Thank okay. you very much. David and Miranda, not so much. And finally, on this round, Jon Snow reported on another of the year's biggest songs. Did anyone get it? Yes. Jonathan, Jamie? Money, Money, Money by Susan Boyle. <laughs> No. <laughs> David, Miranda? We weren't concentrating Confused, again. Confused, because we're, Jon Snow, he's, he's gone, gone nuts. Because he's meant to be reading the news and he's it just It just keeps, gibberish. like, song lyrics and stuff. Not it's gone weird. weird. It's weird, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're our best hope, and I'm, I'm, the hope is all is lost. It, I want your money... I, something like, I want your money by Jesse J, is it? So we'll give you that. Jesse J, uh, it was price tag. <laughs> price tag. All right, let's have a little look at the price tag. Check it's out price tag. He's no steps, tell you that. <laughs> time for another little bonus round. This time it's all about virals. Let's see how many of these you remember, OK? Um, Beyonce was all over the news all year, but why did a clip of an encounter with an overexcited fan go viral? Oh, yeah, so it's a clip of Beyonce with an overexcited fan. It went viral. Everyone saw it. Yeah. It's in the audience. Yeah. yeah. OK. Sort of David, Miranda, what have you got? He knows this. It's because um, B 
Beyonce sat on the fan and, and, and squashed her to death. <laughs> no? Uh, Jonathan, Jamie? We, I, this is a great clip. We actually, we know the answer. Yeah, we do. She goes out near the audience and she's singing along and then they're all going crazy and this girl sees it goes nuts. She goes, I love you, Beyonce, I love you, Beyonce. And then Beyonce lets her have the microphone for a minute and she joins and she just makes... And she sort of goes... Aah! 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 <laughs> Beyonce looks terrified. <laughs> David, Eddie, we have the same answer. Uh, let's, well, let's have a look and see. Question. Fenton the dog became a YouTube sensation this year, but what was he filmed doing? <laughs> okay, so I asked you why Fenton the dog became a YouTube sensation this year. David and Miranda. It's the first, first dog, dog to, to get, get a vajazzle. <laughs> But the problem was that they spread out from that area all over the fur mm. because they didn't really know where the, the pubic region ended. <laughs> and, uh, so it took, it took seven years to bejazzle the dog and, and people it's are watching just... a seven-year-long clip of a dog being bejazzled. <laughs> I think people have got too much time on their hands, <laughs> Jimmy. Uh, David, Eddie, what, what have you got? Why did Fenton become an internet sensation? Chasing deer. Chasing deer, you say? OK, what do you think, Jamie well, and Jonathan? I, I think that, you know, uh, was an inadequate answer. <laughs> like, chasing deer was the obvious bit, but across a road, nearly causing a massive pile-up, while the man shouts, Fenton! 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 Oh, Christ! Oh, Christ! Fenton! Oh, Christ! Fenton! Oh, Fenton! Fenton! <laughs> you say nearly causing a massive pile-up? Yes. That is speculation. <laughs> 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 it is averting a massive pile-up. Over that, that car would otherwise have caused if it hadn't been slowed by the deer. No. <laughs> Let's have a look at this clip and make up our own minds. Very complete answer. You definitely get a point. You get a point too, David and Eddie. Let's have a Thank quick check right. on the scores. David and Eddie have 24 oh, points. They're in the lead. Uh, Jonathan and Jamie have <laughs> 22 points. David and Miranda are in third place with three points. <laughs> Join us after the break for the nail-biting finale of the Big Fat Quiz of the Year 2011, when one of our panellists will be singing for their lives. What? I'm pretty sure that's right. Welcome back to the final part of the Big Fat Quiz, and as the washed-up celebrity of November is forced to eat the kangaroo anus of December, let's find out how the year ended. Jim will fix it host Jimmy Savile died. I guess he finally got round to reading my letter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Conrad Murray was found guilty of the manslaughter of Michael Jackson. He claims he did everything by the book. Unfortunately, the book in question was how to sedate an elephant. <laughs> Three of the world's top cricketers went to prison for spot-fixing. To explain, spot-fixing is what happens when something I don't understand is done by someone I've never heard of in the middle of something I don't give a fuck about. <laughs> right, we're on to our final set of questions. So, November, December. In December, two unusual visitors arrived at Edinburgh Airport having enjoyed an in-flight meal of apples, carrots it's and right. cake. Who were they? <laughs> yeah. OK, you all got something? David. 
Yeah. Write something down. <laughs> For our next question, we go over to my chief scientist, yeah. Professor Brian Cox. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Big Fat Quiz. Professor Brian Cox here. Now, I know you think science is all fast cars, women and parties, which it predominantly is, for me at least. But there <laughs> is a serious side. This year, six men completed a 520-day stay in a box. But what were they practising for? Yeah. Why were those men in a box? OK. Beautiful. OK, you got it? Yeah, beautiful. Next question. After a night of post-exam celebrations, London policeman Gary Withers got into trouble for sleeping in an inappropriate location. Where did he wake up? This is not a euphemism. This is not a euphemism. You got it? You think? Jamie's got it. Jamie knows. Jamie knows. I got a good one. He's smart, he's got it. Yeah. Oh, we've got another Say What You See puzzle. This spells out a new story. What new story is it? There's a lot of competition here. David and Miranda coming up from the rear. No change there. <laughs> We're all about the picture ones, though. That's how we got our point last time. <clears throat> Ready. Ready. Next. OK. I've got the final question of the Big Fat Quiz of the Year 2011 here. You want to hear it? Yeah. Yay! Final question. OK. Appropriately, we end this year's quiz with an and finally question. How was award-winning wildlife photographer David Slater upstaged by a monkey back in July? Mm. He's an award-winning photographer and he was upstaged by a monkey in July. Classic and finally news story. So End of the news, depressing, depressing, yeah. depressing. One lovely little story at the end. And finally, the Queen is dead. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you all got your answers? Everyone got answers? This is pretty close between Jonathan and Jamie, David and Eddie. This could go yeah, either way. It wouldn't way. be if they hadn't been allowed to cheat. <laughs> we been... well, let's not be sore losers before the event. Okay. We just worked very okay. hard. I asked you who enjoyed a meal of apples, carrots and cake on the flight to Edinburgh. What did you put? Jedwood. But then <laughs> we, we changed, changed it to mind. pandas. You went pandas? Yeah. Okay, uh, David, Miranda? H and Claire from Steps. Because <laughs> Claire's got quite big and yeah. they put her in a forced <laughs> diet. And they were doing a show in Edinburgh. So they said, you're too fat, love. You just have an apple and a carrot. <laughs> okay, D David, Eddie? You got pandas. You got pandas? Yeah. OK, I can tell you that you are right. Yeah. Pretty good. OK, well, you both, get, you both get a point for that. I don't think we can give you a point for two members of Steps. Oh. Anyway. Because it isn't the case. But two pandas arrived in Edinburgh, you know. It may later turn out that the pandas are just obese members of Steps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take their head off and go, hi, it's Hi, us. we're ready to do the uh, In which now. case, we will retrospectively give you a good. point. But, thank you, know, you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Like but... you should have done with Richard Keyes. <laughs> Just let it go, Miranda. Okay, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Brian Cox asked you why some people sat in a box in the name of science. What did you all put? Mars mission. Mars mission, you think? They were practising for the Mars mission. What do you think, uh, Jamie and Jonathan? Exactly the same. Mars trip, living in a box, see if, you know, they can... Living in, in a box on Mars, maybe, even, but then we went with the okay, Mars. OK, so Mars trip. You put... Uh, David and Miranda, I imagine you got it right as well? We well, put... I couldn't concentrate because he's too dishy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Lovely, he's isn't he? He's dishy, that, isn't he? Who? He's got... Professor Brian Cox. Professor oh. Brian Cox. Do you think he's too attractive to be able effectively to impart knowledge? In a way. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, should we go back to Brian Cox for the answer? Yeah. Have a look, Miranda. I won't be able to concentrate. Sure. <laughs> Hello again. How did you get on? Well, the answer is that they were practicing for a manned mission to Mars. I do that by sitting in a jacuzzi. <laughs> Okay. As you do. Brian Cox, the... everyone. He's just the coolest. Yeah, he's cool. They missed the trick with those Mars guys, though, didn't they? Because surely you would play a trick on them when they came out of that box. And dress as apes. And... <laughs> and what I and think they, they should a... do is they should have come out of the box and been yeah. in another box that they didn't know was there when they came out. <laughs> or just a bigger one. Yeah, just a bigger one. And then you come Only out of that and there's a bigger one. They could walk around the it other It was box. in Russia, so that would kind of make sense. <laughs> well, they love that Russian doll thing. OK, so who got that right? Uh, Jonathan and we Jamie and David right. and Eddie. OK, so it's all pretty tight on scores. Uh, David and Miranda, I'm pretty sure you're close. I don't think I've got that. <laughs> OK, so I asked you where PC Gary Withers Gee. woke up after his post-exam celebrations. What did you all put? No, I don't know. I'd not heard this news story at all. Because okay. the others we got right. I mean, and pretty this much. <laughs> this is the one you're to beat on. 99% yeah. was right, but this one... This one whoa, got us. Oh, got us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, David and Eddie, what do you think? Where did he wake up? Well, we thought it could be in uh, a lake, a police station. 
<laughs> helicopter. Plane. Baked potato. OK, it was an inappropriate Train. place. OK, Jonathan and James, what do you think? I want to make this is not a euphemism, but we thought he might have woken up in the royal box. <laughs> Ooh. In the royal box. I can tell you, you've all got this wrong. He actually woke up in an Occupy London tent outside St Paul's. Oh. <laughs> And was recognised by some of his colleagues, I think. OK, so uh, I, I, we had a Say What You See question. David we're, Miranda. We're all about okay. these. Your specialist subject. OK. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. Cameron, Cameron vetoes, vetoes tree coffee. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you are so close, you're going to kick yourself. No! <laughs> what, what did you put, David and Eddie? We put uh, Cameron vetoes tree... Uh, T. Oh! <laughs> it looks like Why coffee. You're not trying? It look, I mean, it's weird because it's in a tea cup, but it does look like coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It could be coffee. <laughs> You know? <laughs> Jonathan, Jamie, did you get this? Cameron vetoes treaty. OK, that is Dead the right simple. answer. So you get points. You get points. You I'm tempted close. to give you a point, oh, but no. Yeah. Oh, Richard, please. I think please. they were close. No, you said coffee. <laughs> no. Please, Jimmy. No, you Richard, didn't take please. it seriously. You don't please, get a point. Jimmy. Please, Jimmy. I'll give you a blowjob, please. <laughs> <laughs> that comes free with a gift. All right, you get a point. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm just... <laughs> no, because, you know, because now we've got a finale for the show. <laughs> uh, and finally, how did a monkey upstage wildlife photographer David Slater? What did you get? Uh, the monkey stole the camera. Camera. Took a load took of pictures of himself. Of himself um, and uh, and they looked pretty good. Chilling. OK, David and Miranda? We just Which wrote monkey. monkey. <laughs> <laughs> we were aware that the monkey must have done something extraordinary. Yeah, I said that in the question. So, <laughs> half, I mean, it's half a point, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> because we just missed out of the, the thing about the taking the picture, but everything else was right. <laughs> it it did involve you, a you monkey. Didn't, you didn't put anything that was wrong. No! You didn't put enough. <laughs> I heard about this, but I just wondered whether the monkey stole the camera and took photographs of himself, or whether he was going, you know, like this, and then could you, and then... <laughs> Have a look at how good this photo is. <laughs> <laughs> how adorable is that? He took that himself. <laughs> so, right, time to tot up your final scores. That's the end of the quiz, the Big Fat Quiz of the Year, 2011. How did you do at home? You can compare yourself to the three teams. Uh, David and Miranda, you are in third place. Not bad. No, it was very bad. close. It's all right. It's it was very close. Yeah. You got four. Yeah. Style. OK, this is, this is where it gets interesting. In second place, with 26 points, it's Jonathan Ross and Jamie Oliver. Well which done. means the winners are, with 28 points, well David and Eddie. Yeah. Here is your trophy, boys. Yeah. You get a trophy, you won a prize. A big thank you to our amazing panel, our special guest, and all of you for watching. I'm Jimmy Carr. This has been Big Fat Quiz of 2011. Good night. Victorious. Congrats, you're well done. <laughs> we should drink stuff out of it. You should. You should be opening champagne. Yeah, we should. Throwing it. And <laughs>